The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 117. I am your host, Gav. Dan, what's your Hello, name? Hello, I am Dan. I've done it again. I like it when I say, Dan, what's your name? It's my, I, it's my little joke. I was uh, in awe of the way, the cool way that you said the episode number. Thank you. One, 117. I never like know. A prisoner of the future. Yeah, it could be. I never know what it's uh, going to come out like when we start speaking. It depends on the day of the week, I guess, and the mood I'm in. That, that's you all over. You never know what's going to come out until you start no speaking. I have no idea. No, sometimes. Um, welcome, listeners. Um, uh, welcome to uh, 2022, uh, a year that I've been writing down on uh, bits of paper for about eight months, randomly. I don't know why. I kept writing 2022 <laughs> last year, all the time. Always um, living in the future, that's you. So, Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you had a good Christmas, a good winter. Uh, if it's still very cold and wintry where you are, I hope you're all safe and sound, curled up together, wrapped up naked, or by yourself, wrapped up naked, and next to a fire with a drink or Why a cigar. Why are you wrapped up naked like a little mole rat? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, and you're happily listening to us. Um, we uh, cover horror movies, uh, sometimes other films, sometimes comedy, sometimes cult, stuff like that. So welcome if it's your first time. Uh, please bear with us. We do ramble on us slightly, as I am now. Um, this is my uh, birthday episode. We like to do little seasonal episodes, don't we? We do different special uh, speciality ones. Birthdays being one, and it's mine. Um, Dan, you do some talking. <laughs> Yeah. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. Um, How are you? Happy New Year. I'm good. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, happy, happy New Year, New Year. to our listeners. Mm. Um, yes, we'll get on to your birthday in a second. You're asking how I am. Mm. Well, I know. this is exciting. This, this is, is exciting. It's we first. are recording as we speak, as right. I speak. Before we go on to it, I remember another first of ours, which is why when we discovered the news that someone had died while on air. Who was yeah, that? George George Romero died George while, Romero we, were died. while we were actually recording live, which was like well recording. Um, so that was an odd one. But yes, this is another first of the podcast. Horror, more than the first, and the bumblebee attacking me and going by the <laughs> microphone. So yes, it is a first because I, as we record, I am currently riddled with COVID nineteen. Yeah, this is a, this the is coronavirus. A the the thing that's kind of enabled us to be in the same room together uh, because it's in the world you know everywhere um, you have it now which which seems to be a lot of people and a huge amount of people I know now have had it or have got it right now as we speak by like yourself yeah it's uh, the, this new strain is um, obviously much much easier to catch and a lot less deadly thankfully so um, yeah I think I think I think about 80 percent of the uk have, have had it or currently got it mm. that's not just this strain that's just every strain of covid19 but um the main thing is we're all fine um the babies even have got it but obviously they haven't had that's they've insane. not had any vaccinations so yeah. they were really really sad for a couple of days they were just crying and screaming for about three days but they are back to the normal now the weird thing is doing the lateral flow tests as me and alice are doing um we She's clear. I'm almost in the clear, but the babies still have quite strong um, positive tests. But you wouldn't know it. They just they're just happy, bobbing around, doing their little thing. So we're all bloody isolating for now, um, for a few more days. But mm. yeah, uh, you know, as you can hear, I don't sound ill. I, I was ill. You know, I had what I would call a, a more than mild cold has for a it, few days. I, has your smell come back? It did. The weird thing is, for the two days I didn't have smell, it would come back in the evening. Okay. It was so strange. It would go all day, and then late in the evening it would come back, and then I'd wake up with It'd no go, sense of smell go again. Like a little walk somewhere. 
I don't know where. Like Gobi the symptoms. Nosy. You know, to go be nosy. We, some of the symptoms we had were weird. Like we had really cr- crazy nightmares and dreams, both me and Alice. Okay. Um, which may be why the babies were like waking up a lot. Maybe they were having little nightmares as well. Just really weird. And the uh, the biggest symptom I tried googling and no one talks about it is we just couldn't stop eating. I know a lot of people lose their appetite, but we were just hungry, hungry, hungry all the time. So we got a big Domino's pizza order in one night, didn't we? Of course. How funny that you're hungry all the time. That, that maybe I, I permanently have COVID without knowing it because I'm always eating. Well, apparently, if you've had all three vaccinations, which we have, and then you get this Omicron strain, there's a theory that you are then a uh, you're, you have a super immunity, um, and you'll prob- most likely never catch it again. I don't know. That's all. That's a theory that a lot of scientists have. But there's a million theories about COVID. Still, Some people don't still, even believe it's real. Well, we're still in the early stages of uh, COVID. Still, really, yeah. we're, we're still at. Uh, a very uh, uh, adolescent age of the virus, so we're still yet to see the uh, what goes on and what happens, effects, etc. Uh, anyway, yes, so it's the first for us. So there COVID, we go, listeners. Yeah. So uh, we're, all, we're all we're all safe, you know. Good, and good. Uh, forget all of that because this is your birthday episode, as you said. Mm. Um, so happy birthday! Thanks you so turned much. 40, 45, 22, if I rightly. 22. 27, 27, 31. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 45, big 45, which is weird. So it's kind of like, I guess I'm kind of halfway now, you know, if I get to 90, which would be nice, you know, a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, and and half of that, half that again, because it'd be me sleeping, or a third of it, me sleeping. So there's not much left, really, is there? You know, I should just get on and start doing something, you know. <laughs> what what did you do for your, your 45th birthday? Um, nothing really. Um, I was with Sarah for a bit, then um, I went home. Actually, on my birthday, I saw Sarah in the morning, and then I went and got my kids, and I spent the day with my kids, really, and it was a school night, so we didn't do anything. Kind of boring, really. Really kind of boring. I actually ordered a curry, though, from the curry house downstairs for me, and they gave me loads of free shit because it was my birthday. They, in fact, came, oh, up, yes. they came up the other day and just gave me a, a knock on door. What the fuck's that? Massive... Pl- uh, tin stainless steel tin of curry for me and the kids there you go have that what yeah. okay thanks for free i want to live a, i want to live above a curry house good good food as well so the kids don't eat it so i was like fucking hell right my dad dad i've got some curry for you talking of curry houses um they're currently filming the new marvel disney plus show in parts of it they're filming in leeds at the moment right. and apparently the other night in a curry house in leeds because there's a lot of curry houses big asian community in leeds apparently samuel L. jackson just strolled in uh to order some curry imagine sitting in your little curry house in leeds and he walks in be a bit weird wouldn't it but motherfucker you better bring me a goddamn chicken tikka masala right now you would be scared or you'd ask him for a review where he says that this is great oh, motherfucking curry house or whatever. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't really do much for the kids and stuff. Um, it's one of those things, having a birthday just after Christmas and shit, it's always been the same thing. And it was a school night, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a single dad with three children. So, you know, what do you do? But, you know, gone are the days of partying so much. But but I will have a party again, definitely on my 50th. God, that sounds weird as fuck and old as fuck as well. Definitely going to have a, another fancy dress party. Absolutely. That means... Here's a scary fact. That that means it's been five years since that fancy dress party that yeah, you had. I know. It's crazy, isn't that, it? That is crazy. I mean, two years of that has obviously been eaten up by COVID and isolation, but five years since... Five years since we first met RJ McCready, fellow Legionnaire podcaster, yeah. uh, who rocked up, dressed up as... Um, RJ McCready. Kurt Russell. As oh, no, McCready. he was RJ McCready. Anyway. And I, yes, of yeah, but no, who was I? I was RJ McCready you, too. You were RJ McCready. We were both RJ McCready. <laughs> I was shit. His I looked was, well, be- well better than mine. Well better. Uh, just looked better than mine. <laughs> I, I was um, Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead, wasn't I? And with I got big so head. drunk. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take loads of pictures with my phone. I got so drunk. I didn't take any picture. didn't take one picture. I got s- just so drunk. It's I such found a shame. you at one point, because you were DJing your own birthday for a part of it. Oh, yeah. I found you at one point nowhere to be found and then i found you slumped over the bar and i said are you all right you said you, you were so drunk this is back when you used to drink obviously and you just said 
I, I just can't believe everybody's come. This just means so much to me. And I was like, mate, you are you are wrecked. We need to get you home. And you're like, I'm just so happy that everyone's come. Uh, I was pretty was drunk. Then I think I cried, actually. <laughs> He did cry a little bit to me, but it was happy. It wasn't like you were sad. You were so happy that everyone had come. Anyway, don't drink anymore. Right. Um, so it's my birthday that's, episode. That's birthday. Now, the yeah, uh, films I've chosen, uh, lovely listeners, um, it's kind of a carry-on themed, um, and Dan it will get to explain what that is in a bit, the carry-on films. If you don't know them, I think most of you will, but I think there may be most, some most listeners in some countries may not. Yeah, our UK listeners will 100 percent know what carry on films are. Yeah. But um and a, a lot of our it's American a staple listeners like probably, James probably Bond. will because Yeah, it's it's up there with Benny Hill, Monty Python, it's that British yeah. beach comedy boobs and bums. Yeah, slightly and slightly uh, <laughs> bit PC nowadays and that a lot of it. Um so I, I chose um, a movie. I just I don't know. I just a couple. I chose a couple of movies because I recently found uh, What a Carve Up, which is two characters from the Carry On films in a horror movie. One from one of my favourites, Sid James, uh, who my mum has a photograph of. Um, it lo- and he looks really unhappy that my mum's taken a photograph of him. It's quite funny actually. Um, and <laughs> the house, because <laughs> that's how he laughs. House in Nightmare Park, which is another uh, character from um, the Carry On films in a- another horror movie. So, and they're both around the same theme that is is about inheritance and going to a mansion. Pretty much both of them. Yeah, so What a Carve Up from 1961, House in Nightmare Park from 1973, over 10 years apart, but yes, very similar. Uh, they've got that House on a Haunted Hill vibe, which had a similar theme. Lots of people invited to a mansion, yeah. um, a bit of like... It's um, a murder mystery, slot What's horror. the other one? Uh, House of Long Shadows, all of those kind of stuff that yeah. we, we love. Um, yeah. So yeah, people invited along, people getting bumped off. And they're fun. But the funny thing is they're very British and they've got that very British comedy streak running through them. So really interesting to to talk about those two. Uh, with you. One of them is a black and white and it's on YouTube. In fact, I think they're both on YouTube. They're not very good copies, but you can find them on there. Um, I was lucky enough to have them both on HD because they were both on the horror channel over the last few months recently over here in the UK. So yeah. I was very lucky. So I just fancy he's going to picking up these films and doing these these are not like movies that can have you riveted to your seat listening to us discuss them we're not going to get in some deep fucking conversation with them it, uh, they're just kind of tongue-in-cheek sort of just like ah you know they're all right uh, and for anyone who hasn't heard you know when we do our birthday episodes we literally it's no it's do what you want really you know like for it's my last for birthday all, episode it? i did labyrinth and team wolf yeah yeah, Gabby, yeah. You, you chose rambo and session, session nine, nine. So really random, but yeah, it's do whatever you want. Really, films we really like, yeah. But I'd only discovered a house, um, uh, the other one, what a carve up recently. So I've only just seen it once, um, but I kind of enjoyed it. So I was like, come on, let's do that one, and it works. Yeah, it's got you written all over it. But we'll get into that when we when we go through the review. Um, well, films, film, film, films. What what on earth have you been watching? What have you been? Looking at with your eyeballs on the screen. Uh, well, stuck in the seventies, and I've actually been watching with Sarah some of the Roger Moore Bonds. Now, as you say that, you know, I've just realised really that his name is almost a double entendre, isn't it? I used to work in a restaurant very many years ago, and there's a woman in there called Wendy. She is probably a few years older than me. I think she liked to get a belt. There's no other way of saying it, and. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and she, she likes to get about. Yeah, and she says every one day she's she's a bit older than me. She's not. I was a bit of a young like. Oh, hello, with spots and that. Like and I wasn't in with that thing with her. Definitely, she wasn't picking me and taking me beyond the bike sheds. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and she's like, "Oh, Roger Moore." She said to me once. I went, oh, and I went, oh, the way she said it, and that's exactly how she said it. Oh, Roger Moore. I was like, Isn't that oh, funny? I, I've never really thought about that until you said it there. But it is his name is itself. He could have been a Bond girl because Bond girls famously have names like Pussy Galore well, and uh, yeah, Roger well, Moore. That would be definitely one thing. You know, you get like Friday Fames. You go, what's the body count? With Bond, it's what's the bonk count? Because yes, it is, um, so far, well, you could call got... it a body count. You could call it a body count. Well, so <laughs> far we've got the best. Best so far he's done. I think was. It, it's a view to a kill where he has sex with four different people 
wow. the film. Shaken, but the, not stirred. The last one I watched last night was A Spy Who Loved Me, and he has sex oh, yeah. four times, but... Uh, no, or oh, was it three times? It might have been four times, but twice with one person. Okay. So he keeps it... He slightly keeps it slightly nicer for one of the ladies, at least. But is, has Bond got an STD? Because if he has, it is spread like the... Like, like coronavirus. You know. I would say that he's definitely got a few children knocking around out there. He's definitely got some little bonds. That's what I, I said, sir. I bet he's got a load of little bonds stuck ba- away Little somewhere. baby bonds. Baby bonds. And it's really <laughs> amusing watching these films because they're like... What movie came out last year which was good? Enter the Dragon. What should we have in this movie? Let's have car, uh, let's have uh, Kung Fu and Karate. Okay. What movie came yep. out this year which is good? Jaws. Okay. Let's have sharks and let's have a character. And we call him Jaws. Yep. There's it, even one of the um, Roger Moore ones. It's only really the Roger Moore ones that this happened. There's even one of them where Chris Smoking the Bandit and the Cannibal Run and those sort of films were great. They even had the Sheriff character in Who comes one up twice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like they're doing stunts where they're driving over bridges and stuff. And it's, it's so yeah. easy to see that now and go, okay, so they just saw what was making the money. And it's, it's the real lazy producer type to do that. But the Roger Moore era Bonds, actually, without getting into Bonds, because there might be people who don't like no, James no, Bond No, no, it's your films, birthday. It's fine. Um, the Roger Moore Bonds are so, like, um, they're so fun. I grew up with them, so that favorites. is what I, I would favorites. watch on telly would be yep. those ones, because we grew up with them, yeah. They are kind of fun, though, and Roger Moore is just so unmuscular. Coming from, like, the Daniel Craig and stuff, he is so... F- like, Sean Connery was a, a weightlifter, a bodybuilder back in the day, yeah. before an actor. Um, Roger Moore's just got nothing. I have more muscles than Roger Moore. It's just like, what the fuck? That's just weird, you know? But um, it's just, he's a funny character. He's just, the way he just kind of walks through things, kind of just smiling. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah. Well, to me, his movies I like, are... I love him, love him. You know. I, I love them. They're my favorite. He's my favorite Bond because like exactly the same as you. I had a lot of fun watching them as a kid. But to me, his movies were almost pr- proto Austin Powers, he's he's having fun. He might as well look at the screen a lot of the time and go, I'm James Bond and I'm about to have sex with this girl. Pretty much. He, pretty he might as well look at the screen, that, look know? at the camera and wink just before it goes into, uh, goes into his mission. Um, but I'm a big Timothy Dalton fan as well. Yeah, I need I to love, watch them I love again. The two he yeah. Did. yeah, I need to watch them um, again. There we go. Um, so you've been watching Bond? And, um, you know, I've been watching other things. We watched the Chernobyl TV show, the Sky Atlantic TV show, uh, because Sarah and I on the High Strangers podcast just released our Chernobyl episode. So we were just watching that for that reason, really. And that was quite an interesting series and quite crazy, if you ever want to know about that story. Absolutely crazy. Um, uh, then Sarah got me to watch a couple of movies. Santa Sangre last night, a uh, Jodorowsky movie again. Um, after like Holy Mountain, um, slightly tamer, not as bad. 1989, there's still some weird shit in it. At times, I'm like, yeah, of course that's going on. You know, of course that's <laughs> happening. You know, of course. Give me one. It? Give me one example. Um, the, there's a, a dwarf riding an elephant. Of course that's <laughs> of course that's going on. <laughs> a little person, sorry. Of course that's happening. It's just you know, it's just what I expect. Um. That wasn't. That was slightly tamer. Actually, it wasn't too bad, and like more cases story, but got kind of boring towards the end. Actually, um, but did Sarah the other night? I said, oh, "All right, we're in CEX," and she got uh, on Blu-ray. I spit on your grave one and two, and I was like, "Oh, all right, and I'll watch that first one." Fucking hell, Jesus Christ! That movie's so like this is the remake or the original remake. Original remake, yeah, two thousand and ten. It's 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 quite good. I thought it's a really really well produced film. It's really well acted. Like you, is that the one? Um, it's with, really well uh, made. Fish hooks in the eyelids. Yes, and uh, wow, a sheriff yes. gets the shotgun, f- up his fucking bottom. him up and back and forwards in his ass before blowing yeah. his brain for it. And yeah, it I thought too, it was done really well. It's really well done, but it's a bit too full on for me nowadays. I think I'm a bit too sensitive nowadays. My older age. Like, I've it's just seen, a bit um, like, fuck me, man, that's too much. I've actually seen all of those. Uh, I think there's about five of them now. Oh, my um, God. Of course you've seen them all, though. You love it. Of course, you know what I'm like. But I, I must admit, I'm not... I always end up watching these, uh, and I hate... I even hate the genre name, the rape revenge films. Uh, but I always end up watching them, and then... I know. 
And you kind of get you get into them, but then you think, well, the only reason I'm excited for this girl to do this because she's been through a terrible trauma. So I'm I'm always a bit torn about what I think about uh, these movies. Well, that's why I like Liam Neeson bloody going after people revenge thing in that sense, action revenge. But yeah, I yeah. do like, and it's really really well made, for, like really well made film. The director's gone on to just make loads of uh, straight to movie, uh, straight to TV movie, uh, Christmas movies. Which is really weird, um, but it's oh, a really well made film, and he made Pop Two as well. I'm not going to watch it. Sarah told me about some of the gore in it, and I was like, oh, "That's just too much. I can't. I don't need to see that." But I like the story. I like the uh, build up of the, the tension of like it's going to be a re- revenge thing. I do like that. I don't obviously like the rape. It's like really, I just want a, a drama where people talk. <laughs> <laughs> No sex but or you, violence, please. I mean, you don't because we do a podcast called the Podcast on Haunted Hill. No, I don't. But the these were just they were just two, <laughs> they were just the extremes of both uh, genre of sex and violence. They were just extremes of them, and I don't really need to see that really. Uh, Fair but I appreciated the film actually, as it was a quite a well-made film. It's really well acted. I was quite impressed. Yeah, well, I was impressed with that. What have you been doing then? Uh, so squeezing in around the baby duties and everything else uh, I've been watching a few catching up on my Marvel I won't bore you with that but I've caught up on uh, the Hawkeye TV show on Disney Plus which is exactly like a sh- if Shane Black made a Marvel Christmas film it would be this it's a six part set at Christmas with Hawkeye Jeremy Renner um, passing the reins over to the new Hawkeye it's a younger a younger woman I was about to say is he not too old for doing this now yeah uh, it's getting too old for the shit, but it's, it's it's basically got Shane Black written all over it. Even though it's not Shane Black, it's very Christmassy, fun action. I loved it, and I've got up on. Um, I watched the Eternals and Shang Chi, so I'm all up to date on Marvel. Uh, but around that though, horror movies. I got round to watching a couple. I watched a really really great one, which I'm. You may have seen called Censor. Have you seen Censor? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, visually it's really good. I don't hugely remember. I remember, for, without spoiling anything, that towards the ending it just kind of not... I don't know, it didn't gel with me, the ending. Yeah, I agree. The ending is definitely towards the end. I kind of... It lost... For me, I lost... A, not interest, but I, I kind of find it perhaps a bit confusing. For me, I, it's one that I know I a second or a third watch I'll definitely love more. But I thought it was really interesting and really... A really good watch as a film fan, especially as well, like with the eighties, yeah. um, the nasties and stuff. Special Ed quality to it. Uh, not special Ed. That's the bloody rapper. Uh, Evil Ed. <laughs> special Ed. <laughs> Evil Ed. Yeah, no, it did. You're right. It did have a really like Evil Ed quality to it. So I watched that. That was good. Enjoyed that. Um, I also watched um, What We Do in the Shadows, the TV show. Yeah, I've not seen Fine. it. It's into a few seasons now, isn't it? Yeah, so there's three seasons. I've only watched season one and two because that's all that's on Disney Plus at the moment. But it, if you've got Disney Plus, guys, it is on there. And season three will be dropping later this year. Um, really good fun. Not quite to the standard of the movie, I've got to be honest. But it's fun. And a lot they, they do have cameos from the actual movie here and there. Um, they also have like cameos from like Mark Hamill turns up as a vampire at one point, and Wesley Snipes turns up as Blade, but he's actually a vampire. That's um, really weird. In fact, they have this one scene, and it's not really a spoiler, where they meet the Vampire Council, and it turns out that everyone who's ever played a vampire in movies is actually a vampire in real life. So you've got like the guy that plays Pee Wee Herman, who was in um, the the Buffy movie, he's in it as a vampire. Blade's in it as a vampire, but he's on like Skype because he didn't want to leave his house. Uh, but it is Wesley Snipes, and it's just so weird. And they, apparently they asked Kiefer Sutherland to do it, but he said no. Um, but I would love to have seen him doing it as well. Uh, yeah, no, really... he, no, he's too bloody serious. He ain't gonna do that. Oh, he's too drunk. Kiefer Sutherland's a bit of a wreck, isn't he, in these days? Really? Oh, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I recommend it. Don't go into it expecting the high, the dizzying highs of the, the movie. But it is fun. And it, they're only 20-minute episodes. So there is that. Um, but there are, my big two that I watched recently, and I know you've seen at least one of them, I watched the new Guy Ritchie movie, Wrath of Man, mm-hmm. which I was actually blown away by. Um, and I know you weren't. So I just wanted no. to have a quick discussion with you about that. Because it's a French, it's a remake of a French film. Um, but I just felt like it was done. The build-up. Uh, Jason Statham is one of his best 
performances in my opinion he was really awesome in it and because i hadn't seen the french film i didn't expect some of the twists and turns in it as Uh, well i've not seen that either no yeah but um i really 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 enjoyed it and he's had a really good cast josh hartnett was great in it it's fantastic to see him after all these years Mm. um but you had a problem with the dialogue and some well, of the stuff. Well, I, I actually tried my hardest to go see this at cinema, and it played about a week in the cinema, then just vanished. And I tried to rent it anywhere, could not find the fucking thing for so long. And then all of a sudden, it just pops up on Amazon Prime. What the fuck? Yeah, it's just Prime so exclusive. I was pretty mate. excited and got to it as soon as I possibly could. I was really excited for the going there, Josh, Josh Hairnet in it with uh, all, with those other people and stuff, and um, and Scott Eastwood. And, I, and Scott Eastwood. Uh, oh my God, Scott, Scott Eastwood a, is so good in this scott eastwood's a terrible actor uh he has uh, you know um he is generally a bad actor he he acts because he looks like his dad and his dad's his dad um uh, he's awful i was hoping guy richie's gonna pull him out but saying this in it he hardly had any dialogue at all he doesn't come into it till halfway towards the end um um he was he was all right in it um my issue was, yeah, I was just watching it. Oh, yeah, nice. I can't wait for this movie. And just start watching it. After I'd just come out from watching that amazing movie, The Gentleman, um, oh, which is that's the pure trouble. We, Guy we Ritchie. Were spoiled. We were spoiled with The Gentleman, and it isn't as good as Gent- The Gentleman is, which is now on Netflix UK for anyone who hasn't seen it. If you want to go watch a really good comeback Guy Ritchie movie, Hugh with Hugh Grant, Colin Farrell and a bunch of really good actors hmm. um, and it's got that snappy Guy Ritchie dialogue yeah violence um, it was just I was just watching this and all of a sudden someone says something and I was like that sounds like someone who's first time writing a script what on earth it was like the dialogue's really like someone said something to someone else and I was like that is just pathetic writing what the fuck and then it happened again, uh, and there's just these points that came out, and I was like, what the shit? And I was like, there's no way Guy Ritchie wrote the script for this and looked on it, and it's these two other guys who have unfortunately gone and written the one for his new movie, which stars Jason Statham and Josh Hannett, uh, which is going to come out very soon in the cinema. So I'm hoping that's going to be better, and this isn't just some way of cashing in. I don't, I don't know, I don't get it, because the movie was, it was all right. It was, I just, yeah, I, maybe I built it up to myself. It's going to be amazing. I don't know. Might be one of those ones. For me, it was it was amazing. It wasn't as good as Gentleman, but it was yeah. it was it was, didn't feel like a Guy Ritchie movie because it it was more of an action. Yeah, there was times where Jason Statham felt like the Terminator, mm-hmm. um, which I just thought was brilliant. And I'd like to see him. I could see him as the Terminator. Just just put that out there. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so I don't know. Check it out. Okay. Uh, I'll watch it again at some point, and I might go. Oh, what was I on about? Maybe I was having a bad day. Don't know. Well, my number one one to talk about before we get into some carry-on action is uh, I, I don't often bump films up my list, but, you know, me, I'm, I, I watch things in the order that they're on my list, so otherwise I'll never watch everything. I do. But occasionally somebody or enough people will say, look, Dan, for fuck's sake, you've got to see this. So I thought, oh, all right, everybody's talking about Malignant, um, James Wan, the new James Wan movie. Everybody, it's in everybody's top three or number one of the year. I'll I'll come out and I'll I'll watch it. It's on it's on Amazon um, Prime. I'll rent it. So I sat there with a couple of rums and I rented it out. Now, have you seen Malignant? No. Okay. It's really, 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 really good, and it's the best, in my opinion, the best thing James Wan's done. Forget all of that other shit he's done. I know he's got a lot of fans i know jamie you're a fan and there are a lot of people that are big james one fans but that whole one of us thing for me is just bullshit uh, I, I i like some of the conjuring movies maybe but i get confused and muddled up as to the timeline and all of the different movies that there are annabelle and uh la Llorona and that's the what Nun I mean. yeah and... i'm like that is that that's also me with bloody marvel films as well that's yeah so you're, you're any, you're, any universe you're marvel, really isn't it? is the you one of us yeah but this is nothing to do with any of that this is a straight up love letter to is it um, giallo's and stuff it's got a giallo vibe all the way through it where there's like a mystery that's been solved by this cop and his partner but it's also got body horror um and you think initially so i would advise you to not have any spoilers but and i know you won't because you you don't generally do that but you go into it for the first sort of 40 45 minutes you think you're watching 
a bit of a grudge supernaturally stalkery slasher film like somebody's following these people and killing these people but you don't know why and there's something off about them that's all i'm gonna say there's a detective following them there's a mystery element there's a woman searching for her sister there's all this kind of stuff but that's all i'll say if you go right. watch it it is phenomenal and and two things i loved about it number one i'd never seen anything the last 40 minutes 30 minutes i'd never seen anything like that before in cinema and i don't i'm surprised no one's ever done that because it's a really interesting thing to do i can't talk about it without spoiling it um and the other thing is it made me immediately want to go back and watch it again um to make sure that things tied up um i haven't done that yet but I'm confident that James Wan's done done a good job of making sure everything adds up. Um, and I think if I go back and watch it again, knowing how it plays out, like with something like The Sixth Sense, I guess, you'll be like, okay, now I'm going to be looking out for something different from this film. It's really good. Highly recommend it. You do have to pay to rent it on Prime. I think I paid like four ninety nine, But do you know what? That's nothing. We we pay ten quid to go to the cinema, or we pay, you know, we used to pay a couple of quid to rent something from Blockbuster. So I don't mind renting stuff off of Prime, um, especially if it's something brand new like that, you know. Um, so yeah, I can't recommend that enough, really. Um, I didn't give it a massively high score. I gave it eight out of ten, but that's still really high for a brand new horror film, hmm. um, and especially a James Wan horror film, who I'm not the biggest fan of, sadly. Um, Is the but- thing you've not seen in cinema before they do is it a really long camera shot that goes somewhere then eventually it goes all the way along and eventually it ends up in someone's bottom oh you've ruined it for everybody spoiler yeah that that i mean that was just one of your home movies it's one of my special home movies that was your birthday episode <laughs> that's my birthday movie it's called waking up at the crack of gaff oh See where this goes. Um, right, um, the camera days. Uh, let's get on to it, shall we? <laughs> well, we've got to make sure we do lots of uh, puns, double entendres, and it's hard in in, in this in this uh, woke world we live in nowadays. Did you say? Well, hang on. You just said it's hard. Oh. So straight straight away. <laughs> That's exactly what. Yeah. What you're going to explain, aren't you? I mean. <sighs> I just love the way that that happens in every scene. There's always something going on. Like, have I'll you had it up you yet? <laughs> I'll see if I can find some sort of like little clip of carry on to put on. Amazing. Between this. Okay. Yeah. And then, okay. So we'll, we'll do that. And when we come back, um, I'll explain what carry on movies are for anyone who, who doesn't really know or, or wants to know a bit more. We'll be right back. Carry on. Only mate. <laughs> 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 Spoken like a true man. Lovely, lovely jubblies. Jubblies means boobs. <laughs> oh god! Everyone, go. please don't stop putting hashtag the podcast on a hard hill a bunch of perverts. Um, so yeah, there, there's a reason we're doing. You, you're the gonna understand. You're gonna understand. Yeah, so obviously, certain jokes don't fly these days, and the Carry On movies and, and series and all the specials, they were made in the 60s and the 70s, um, and and as late as the early 90s, and they are all about double entendres and boobs and busty girls and blokes, you know, old skinny men getting their end away with the young books and blondes, and it doesn't it's very harmless i get well it's not really but it is forgetting all the the, yeah. the, the the pc stuff at the time it was done very innocently um yeah but but it, a lot of the jokes don't fly anymore but but i what i've got i've got some information about what carry on movies are what that what makes a carry on movie because you might be thinking what what does this mean carry on what does this mean so all of the movies all of the films they're all British, and they all start with the word carry on. So it's like carry on up the Khyber, carry on up the jungle, carry on Cleopatra, carry on cowboy. They're all basically a spoof of a particular genre um, or, or, you know, or a type of, uh, like there's carry on nurse, carry on doctor. They take place in hospitals. Carry on screaming. And they're basically, carry on screaming. It was my favourite one, your favourite one. We covered um, it. 
based on like hammer horror um and they're basically spoofing um and sending up in a very british non-pc raunchy way these these genres uh you know and, and every moment they can they will get in a willy joke or a boob joke yeah. or a fart joke uh, and they were very they were family friendly they're all like pg so you know they were on tv on a saturday afternoon at like two o'clock so you, and i watched i've watched some documentaries leading up to this episode i can't believe some of the jokes that how rude some of them are they've got they're not non-pc just jokes about boobs like flat out like saying like you got a couple of nice big ones there love and yeah, then it will cut yeah. away and she's eating like um a couple of melons or something. I don't know. But it's just like, how do they get away? And they're all PG. Yeah. So you grew up with them as a kid in England. You just do. And I've always said there are three staples of British cinema, and those are the James Bond films, which we talked about earlier. Those are the uh, the Carry On movies, which I'll talk more about in a moment, and the Hammer Horror. And those three. Um, so you've got your 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 action slash spy, you've got your comedy, your sex comedy, and then you've got your sex horror. <laughs> but all of them contain a lot of sex because Bond's always shagging people. Yeah. The Hammer horror movies were just loads of boobs um, and vampires and, and blood. And yeah. then the Carry On movies were just loads of boobs, but loads of comedy and boobs. What does that say about British people in the yeah, 60s and yeah, 70s? And then we had <laughs> Benny Hill on TV, and everybody knows Benny Hill because that, for some reason, really translated around the world. Loads of people in the world know Benny Hill, strangely enough. Uh, yeah, it is weird. It is weird. It is all very much just joking about sex continuously, like well, a sex you know, mad or something. It's it really was, it, weird. It was, it was that. It was basically all men were horny, sex mad hound dogs and all the women were these uh repressed big boobed innocent women it was what you'd get on a postcard at the british seaside you had so in in the uk you had these postcards um which you'd buy from blackpool and everywhere else in the uk and they were very very rude jokes that you'd then sign the back of it and send you know somebody wish you were here and i remember looking at those when i was younger and thinking those are rude. I knew they were rude. I remember there was one... It was exciting, old, though, wasn't it, to read them? It was. There was one of a woman on a nudist beach, and she had her back to us. So these were all drawings, cartoon drawings, and she had her back to us, so her bum was there. You couldn't see her boobs, and she had a cat under her arm. And she was on this nudist beach, and she said to these two people, well, one of you help me get the sand out of my pussy. Now, I knew when I was about 10 that that, <sighs> that was a double entendre. I knew that that was... She's talking about the cat under her arm, but she's also talking about her vagina. I know, but you fucking just couldn't do that. Or oh, oh, can you? Oh, you? There is, you do get that sort of stuff in card shops. You do get the <laughs> slight humorous, sexual humorous ones, but not to the extent of those. I don't think anymore. And it's really weird. Then obviously on on national TV, you had fucking Jimmy Savile doing his thing, which no one obviously knew about at the time. So it was just it was a really weird time, I think, for England, uh, 70s, 80s, with sex and the way uh, we looked upon it. It's really weird to look at it now like that. It, it, way- was all in, it was all in innocence and having a laugh, and everybody did laugh at it, women, men. I think possibly they was probably... Uh, at times rude towards the homosexual side yeah. of uh, uh, things, I think. So, so I re- re- presume someone who was gay at the time then would watch it would be like, this is just fucking not good enough. Or but they, they had three or four cast because they had returning cast. They cast did members. have gay actual members who were yeah. who in the, in the films and TV shows would be running after women in, in bikinis and pretending yeah. to be straight. So weird, yeah. It's very, it's very interesting time, and I, I would say I would compare them the Carry On movies to the sort of the eighties, the late seventies and eighties American movies like Animal House, Porky's, Nerds, sex comedies. That eventually Police Academy, sort of, you know. Yeah, the, those kind of ended. I'd say American Pie kind of was the end of those. That there were, some of those were good movies, some of them weren't. Um, but but we're talking about Carry On movies, so. Gav, let's first of all, before I get into what is a Karen film, give you some facts and some stuff before we really do our main reviews, just so people have a bit of background about you know what these movies are. What's your memories? What do you remember? I know you've touched on some of it already. It's I your had... birthday episode. Tell me about Karen movies and you. 
Uh, well, uh, same as you and every every m- most children of our sort of age grew up on these. They were always on TV. Um, uh, I had carried for some reason. I had a small videotape collection as a child growing up, and they were on rotation, like playing them over and over. For some reason, the only Carry On movie I had was Carry On Up the Jungle. <laughs> so I've seen that film so many times, and. It's a weird film, like a couple of guys get lost in the jungle and then they come across a tribe of women and the women just want them to make love to them and give them new people for the village, like babies. Very sexy women with big boobs. Yeah, uh, continuously, and they get to the point where they're knackered, these guys, and they can't have sex anymore, they're so <laughs> tired from it and stuff. And it, and, it, I was, and this was my, one of my children's videos collection like, it was, but it was all very acceptable um that's it really i still i own most of them on dvd um and i still every once in a while like to watch them sarah and i did go through a phase of watching a, of a few of them we probably watched three or four of them and just because they're just kind of it's quite nice to see the old t uh cars the old uh stuff like that as well um early 18 yeah. that's just for nostalgia because i remember that stuff as when i was pretty young but like the humor is just i don't know you can watch it now and be like oh shit and some of it is though quite funny at the same time though some of it is actually generally pretty funny and, and watching it now as a uh someone who's the same age as the characters in it who um the main stars in it um it's really quite funny actually checking out some of the gags you would have missed um which aren't too below the belt pc etc um, i um you. i sorry yeah i I was just going to say, I wasn't going to talk about my bit yet. I'll, I'll let okay. you finish. But no, I, I was have, just going to, I, have. I was just going to say, actually, I've watched a couple of documentaries on the Carry On movies and the, the people that have been, been in them and produced them and directed them. And actually, the, the, a lot of the jokes I've seen haven't actually been that that harmful or that. There's not many that I've seen homophobic remarks. They, they maybe imply some things, uh, but the fact that it's usually a gay guy in the role you know that there's a, an element of tongue-in-cheek there. Um, if you pardon the pun, tongue-in-cheek. There we go. Look, there we yeah, go. There's yeah. the sort of jokes that they've got on these these movies. Um, I think the only problem I have, and a lot of people will have, is there weren't a lot of people of colour cast in these films. So anytime we were in India, it would li- just It'd literally be a white, be person. a white person blacked up. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it was always a bit like, uh, oh, Hey, uh, we're just going to ignore this guy in a turban, and um, yeah, but but that you know, other than that, they actually haven't. They have translated better than I thought. Um, but let's talk about what they are. I mean, I exactly the same as you. I've got nothing more to add. I I watched them as a kid. I used to love Karen screaming, Carry on Cowboy, all of those kind of ones. One that they never did that I always thought they should have done was like a James Bond one. They never did a Carry on Spying or um, you know. Did they not? They should, they should have done one. I mean, Austin Powers filled that void many, many years later. But I always thought, why didn't they do, a, you know, carry on Her Majesty's Secret Service or carry on, you know, they, they could have come up with something cool as a title. And that would have just been, imagine Sid James is like a James Bond. They, type did, character. they did carry on spying. Oh, did they? A top secret chemical formula has been stolen by Stench, the Society for the Total Stench. Extinction of Non-Conforming Humans. <laughs> Um, and so Agent oh. Simpkins and his three trainees are hot on the trail uh, chasing the villains across the world the gadget galore and disguise is compulsory if the heroes are to win the day from the fat man Dr. Mitchman and Dr. Crow no I haven't seen that one so I need to so I need to immediately they watch that did a I thought they did a spy one so there, there you go there we, wow okay that's just blowing my mind all right, well, let's give you a little bit of a synopsis as to what these films are, and then I'll give you some facts and stuff about them as well, and that, that'll build a picture up, and then we can get into our main review. So, as we've discussed, there are long-running British sequence of comedy films, stage shows, and television programmes that started in 1958 and ran right the way through to 1992. So this is a very big chunk of time uh, that these, these films are a real big stamp in uh, pop culture in the UK. Um uh, the Rank Organisation, which is the old school uh, studio, they pretty much did uh, all the distribution and all the films, well, 99% of them were filmed at Pinewood Studios, Yeah, um, which is really, really cool. Um, the trademark of these films was very silly humour 
uh, mainly based on sexual innuendo and double entendre. There are 31 films in total, uh, four TV specials, uh, a television series made up of 13 episodes, um, and there are three West End stage plays. Oh, I didn't know about stage plays. Yeah. So, um, yeah, carry on movies. So let's give you some facts just to build up a bit more. So I've said, already said there was 31. The films themselves were between 58 and 78. So 20 years of films. Uh, and then there was a massive gap between the film, the last film in 1978. And then they did uh, Carry On Columbus in 1992 with Kelly Brook. Yeah, I've never seen that one. I've never seen it either. It had um, Julian... Uh, Clary. Julian Clary. You know, it's just... Uh, I've never seen it. I probably should watch it. Um, every single film had the same producer, Peter Rogers, and the same director... Gerald Thomas. So he directed every single film, Gerald Thomas. I never knew that. Isn't that crazy? I just, I just assumed it would have been just whoever's around, like the, like the Hammer Horror, you got a director who might yeah, have Terrence done three Fisher or four. Or yeah, 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 but there was other people on rotation, obviously. Wow. That, yeah, that so guy, that guy was busy. He was a very busy man for 20 odd years. Um, all made at Pinewood, like I said, which uh, is in Buckinghamshire, um, your neck of the woods. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been on Pinewood a lot. Limited film budgets, so most of the on-location shooting was never more than 20 miles away from Pinewood Studio. So pretty much everything was shot. And these are, these are films that have gone to Egypt, India, Africa, you know, all over the place. Um, whenever they did need to go somewhere, like, for example, Karen at the Khyber, they filmed that in Wales on Mount Snowdon. So they just filmed everything in the UK. They never, ever went abroad to make these movies. Okay. Um, no. There was about 15 regular cast members who were in, you know, almost every film at some point between them. Um, Kenneth Williams was in the most films. He was in 26 out of 31 films. Oh, matron. <laughs> um, Sid James, who we all know. Was... <laughs> so, uh, by the way, that picture, that framed picture of him is still got your name on it. Yeah, I can't um, wait, can't wait. So I had a picture of Sid James, guys, uh, up on my in my old house and in my new house for quite some time. It's a present that was given to me by Rob, my very good friend Rob. Just a picture of him laughing. Whenever you look at it, it just makes you laugh. Cause it's he's just, just his crying. face, though, which is even um, better. But I don't really have any place for it at the moment now. We've got a house full of baby stuff and baby pictures. So I didn't want to get rid of it. So Gav said he's going to look after it indefinitely. So in your new place, I'm going to give you that, and you're going to put that up on the wall somewhere. And Can't wait. When I'm ready, I'll have that back. You might end up just keeping it forever. You never know. So there's, it's, if you need it back, it's there for you. If not, it's going to sit on my wall. Just just think of me whenever whenever you see it. Um, so, yeah, Sid James, um, usually cast in the as a working-class Cockney, weirdly was actually a South African. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. hear that yeah. in his accent a bit. Yeah, he, he didn't was, even he move. Was, he was the main... Guy, if you were say carry on movies, Sid James is your main guy. Then probably someone like Barbara Windsor, who was, who died not that long ago, who nice. uh, very very went on to do a huge uh, career. Yeah, um, yeah. He he didn't actually move to the UK until he was thirty two. Um, so thirty one films, only twenty nine of them are called Carry On Something. Yeah, uh, one of them is called Don't Lose Your Head. Uh, and the other one is called Follow That Camel. So there we go. Uh, the fir very first film that ever came out was Carry On Sergeant, Black and White, 1958. And the last film, as we discussed, was Carry On Columbus in 1992. Um, Sir James, Kenneth Williams and Charles Hawley were apparently paid about £5,000 per film, whilst any female members were paid half that. Of course they were because it was the 60s and the 70s. Um, the highest fee ever paid to an actor working on a carry-on film was 40, that's four zero, thousand pounds. Hmm. And that was, paid, that was paid to Phil Silvers, who was Sergeant Bilko, who showed up in Follow That Camel. So he's even more of a cameo, really, American actor. Now, I, I know that I, I've seen the film. Oh, well, right, OK. No, he's in it a little bit. He's in it a fair bit. Um, yeah, he got 40K for that. Wow. OK. Yeah. Uh, the largest fee paid to a lady was a German actress called Elke Summer. It doesn't say much she got paid, but she was in Carry On Behind. 
Okie <laughs> Summer, isn't she? Didn't she do a horror movie, a horror film? She might have done actually. She probably should do with a name like that. Hmm. I'm gonna look. Um, yeah, have a little look. Um, I, as a weird side note, I remember one of the films was called Carrying Out Your Convenience, and it's about literally about a toilet factory, a factory that makes lavatories, but it's called Carrying Out Your Convenience. How strange. Uh, she did a shot in a dark uh, Pink Panther film. I know she did that. Um, my God, she's done loads. Sorry, you carry on. Um, I think only one cast Oh, that's it. Sorry, Lisa and the Devil. So she's a Mario Barber film. Ah. And, Baron, ah, and yes. Baron Blood. And Baron Blood's another uh, uh, Barber film. Um, all films were shot in less than two months. Uh, Carrying on at the Jungle holds the record for being made in only three weeks. That's your favourite. It's not my favourite, it's one I've seen the most. Three weeks they filmed that in. Wow. Crazy. Um, that's, and that's, se- that's crazy. Seven of the 31 films were made in black and white. Uh, the last black and white film was Carry On Spying. So there we go, that's a black and white one as well. Um, so that that's a quick history and a bit of information on Carry On movies. Uh, very British, very rude. Can't believe they got away with it. But it's the sort of thing you could sit down, mum, dad and the kids. The kids would laugh at the people falling over on banana peels and bumping into things. The mums would laugh at the sort of the rude jokes and the dads' would eyes would pop out at the women's boobs. Yeah, and occasionally you might see a little nipple slip as well. They do. Honestly, the amount of boobs mm. that are on show in these films. Alice was watching one of the documentaries with me and there's a bit where Barbara Windsor rolls over and she's in this tiny little bikini and it her bottom bikini bottoms almost pop off and you almost see her um lady garden hmm i know crazy <laughs> i like i like yeah. carry on camping's one of my favorites yeah that's that's a classic one when the barbara rinsa doing the uh, chest expanding exercises and her bra snaps off <laughs> i mean they're just ridiculous silly light-hearted films and so, so james time. is there with his mate and they they can't their their girlfriends i've taken with them are a bit frigid as that that's what they're i'm not i'm not saying that that's what is their thing in it so they're like oh let's go check out the young girls which is barbara windsor and her friends on a college trip and yep. they, these are these guys in their mid-40s checking these college chicks trying to you know get on them meet up with them the thing that makes them work, these movies, before the last thing I'll say, is what makes them work is the cast. Everyone's got favourite cast members, but all the casts are different. You've got, like, uh, and yeah. each of them has got a different way of talking or a different catchphrase. So, like, Frankie Howard, as we were saying in the break, off air, and Frankie Howard's always sort of like, oh, Yeah, he's the star, then, a star of uh, House Nightmare Park we're going to be talking about. And you've got Sid James, who's just like, oh, blimey, look at that. And, you know, all these sort of... <laughs> the very, uh, yeah, and then you've got, like, the very camp um, Charles Hawtrey. He's like, oh, hello, how are you? And then, oh, no, matron. Everybody knows the matron bit. But then yeah. you've got all the women that are like, oh, I love... They're all cockney, like, oh, I love, how are you doing? Have you seen my melons? <laughs> and yeah. she works on a grocery stand, but you, she's you, like, you'd check quite, out my melons. You'd quite ha- often have, like, the... Uh, the B hammer girls, like the ones which might be Dracula's other women who are also <laughs> vampires, they would be like women in this as well. You'd be like, hang on, I've seen you in hammer movies. And like, it all is, is, she won't have a speaking part. The lady would be there because she has big breasts and there's a pretty, pretty lady. <laughs> that's, that's, that, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, there we go. Well, there's Carry On Movies. So off the back of that, then, um, the two movies that we're reviewing, the first up from 1961 is going to be No Place Like Homicide. What? It's actually called What a Carve Up, but in America or in the US, they they changed it to No Place Like Homicide because obviously pronunciation works better for that title. But in the UK, it was released as What a Carve Up. Yeah, because No Place place Like Homicide doesn't actually work. So, yeah. No, not with our stupid accents. No. Yeah. Homer. Homer. Um, Yeah. So let's have a little trailer for this one, Gav, and then we'll get into some uh, raunchy, saucy, um, black and white, suspenseful mansion house stuff. Yeah, and if I can't find a trailer, it'd just be some white noise, and then we'd be back. (laughs) Here's some white noise for you all. Oh, mansion. (laughs) It's a regular maze, this house. How did you get behind there? 
The same way that the murderer did. There's a secret passage and a stairway leading up to the organ room. Well, wonders will never cease. Looks as though we might have made a mistake about young Ernest. You certainly did. This puts a rather different complexion on matters. I suggest we all remain here for the rest of the night. Ah, keep an eye on each other, eh? I'm going to bed, Mr. Sloan. I wouldn't, Aunt Emily. There's a killer on the loose. Killer? <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> You've been reading far too many novels. What a carve up from 1961. It's a PG movie, an hour and 27 minutes. Comedy horror mystery. Ernie's uncle has just died, but to claim his inheritance, he must spend the night in the ancestral home with the rest of his relatives. Before long, the guests begin to drop dead. Brilliant. So, I'd never seen this before. I'm jumping in first, I'm sorry, but no, I'd never no. seen this before. You suggested it. Funny enough, I'd recorded it because it was on the Horror Channel UK months ago. So I said, oh, perfect. Really want to watch that anyway. So it's got um, a good cast. It's got Kenneth Connor, who is one of my favourite carry-on actors. He's always a straight man. He's a very small, short guy, but always very sort of like trying to be a bit of a bit of a bulldog bloke. You know, he's always like the hard man, you know. And it's also got Sid James in it, who we've talked about. He's brilliant and make, makes most carry-on films, really. But it's also got Donald Pleasance. <laughs> Donald Pleasance Donald in this. Pleasance. Why is he in this film? Why is he in? Five times. Five. I gave him five shots. Five so, shots. yeah, so good little cast going on there. And I watched this film now. It's a black and white movie. You've, you've heard the synopsis, guys. And halfway through this film, I thought, this is this is scav all over this. It takes place in this isolated mansion. It's black and white. There's a bit of a mystery element. There's some saucy, tongue-in-cheek, seaside British humour going on. Uh, you know, and, and, and I just thought, this is so Gavin. It had elements that reminded me of Clue, yeah. um, which I know is a really favorite, big favourite of yours as well. It had elements of uh, um, House on Haunted Hill and a bunch of other movies thrown in. I, I had a good time with it, um, but go for it. Please tell me. Um, I only discovered it last year. Uh, I was on Plex, the free uh, app for movies and TV. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And it was like, I just saw Sid James' name, the black and white, and it, the, the, the cover looked kind of carry on ish. But I was like, what a carve up. Straight away, I was like, well, that's going to be horror. And I was straight away, I was just so excited to find some movie I'd never known. Uh, like you like would carry on spine down there, you know, this one. I was just really happy to find that and go, oh, great, because I really like the carry on characters and especially Sid yeah. James and um, I just have some weird fetish with uh, mansions and everyone being invited to them and people getting bumped off um, I just love that genre I don't know what it is the isolation everybody's stuck and it's a rainy night and someone's a killer I love that story I could watch it a million times over and I have so I always get excited when I see those sort of films. Um, yeah, and went into and watched it, and I just really enjoyed it for its innocence and what it was. It's a real back of a simple time of you know 1961. It's just 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 a film to entertain people. It's no no other agenda there or nothing. It's just nice and simple, and it's got some a little bit of humour here and there. So I was just like, dude, let's cover that film. Let's, let's, we should do that. Um, and that's it, really. I had nothing else to come at it with because I'd only seen it. I think I saw. It for my 31 and 31 at Halloween uh, or October so I was new to it as you are man but I enjoyed it and I thought yeah this is this is definitely one of my films this is a gaff film absolutely yeah definitely it's the only horror film or horror related production that Sid James appeared in because he famously didn't appear in um, Karen Screaming um, no, which is which is, is you know shame he was, he was, well, he was replaced really wasn't he he was um, with the dude from um uh, uh, step to step, step to yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah, that would have been Sid James. Yeah, totally, totally. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let let's get into this film then. Yeah. Um, okay. Go for it. Quite an old one. Super super old. Like like there's uh, old train stations and thing. It's just very very uh, yeah very old really. Um, as you just said, old. 
it's got some great humor in it though um we start off with meeting our our main star our main character ernie ernie i love the fact that it starts with with he is a proofreader which is quite interesting like um obviously these these jobs had to be done before but for some reason working class people who these were particularly aimed at and who were the stars of the film i think that's how so many people could relate to these movies uh like the carry on series um it was just your every average person really um and you don't think of these like uh, uh proofreaders or jobs or thing but ernie's the, sitting there and he's reading a horror book yeah he has to read i love he it tells his highest mate later on he reads about six books a day i um, i love the naughty one <laughs> the naughty book thing he has he reads naughty books as well and he says uh, why don't you get paid so much for them and said saying it says to him he says well i only get off because they think i'll get uh, i'll get uh, the pleasure from the books so he only gets paid <laughs> half to do the naughty books, basically the adult stories. The naughty books. Because he, um, uh, they assume he's getting pleasure out of it, so he only gets paid half. That's fucking amazing. Well, he's reading He's reading this book. He's a, a bit of a wimp. Um, you know, he's trying to be half He's, he's, he's a, getting a scared by sounds around him. It really sets off the tone of this sort of film and what you're going to get from this film. I really like this opening scene. I would, I would honestly say that this would make genuinely make a good double bill with House on Haunted Hill because mm. what you've got two ends of the spectrum with a similar story. One is a very funny tongue in cheek, and the other one is very camp, but but trying to be very scary. And obviously, we, we love that that movie. Um, it's just it's, if you go into it thinking about that, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. So Sid, his housemate Sid James, crashes in. He falls um, into the flat because the door's <laughs> locked. I thought he's because he's drunk. I thought so it freaks it out. freaks Ernie out. He's a complete freaked out because he's been reading his horror book. It makes him jump and stuff. So there's a slight argument in shoes. Now, presume we come across presuming that these two are, are flatmates. You know, yeah. Sid Sid's got um, a, a briefcase that says "Honest Sid" on it. Brilliant. As, it, it, well, how else can you trust someone if they don't have their name with "honest" before? Honest Gav. <laughs> Honest Dan. <laughs> Listen, it says, says honest Sid on my briefcase. Sid James came up to me with honest Sid on his suitcase. He said, all right, can I do some jobs? He said, no, you can't. Go away. Now, they're chatting away, and somebody enters their flat. Well, well, they have enough money for fish and chips, so he says, look, I've got some money here, blah, 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 go get some fish and chips. So that's what Sid goes to do, and leaves the door open because he does... It's a bit weird here, because then he's like, oh, I'm scared. Leave the door open, though, so I don't have to get up again. Yeah, he's scared, so like, like yeah, if you're scared, you don't want people just wandering in your flat. Well, who do you have wandering in your flat? It's well, me. Uh, it's a very young... <laughs> Donald Pleasance. Uh, Donald Pleasance with a black hat and a beard, and he is a solicitor... He looks kind of spooky and creepy, doesn't he? He is fucking creepy. And he says, your uncle will... Your uncle is dead and he has a will. Um, and tomorrow the will's going to be read. It's in Yorkshire. And you must you must be... You must come along. That's quite... Uh, it's just to speak geography-wise, I am sh- assume this is London. Yeah. There are, to the next day, and this is not obviously modern-day transport, so it would have been a little bit slower, uh, to get to Yorkshire, that's good. That's quite a bit of journey to do. There's probably only about three trains a day back in the 1961. That's going to take quite a while to get there. They must be exhausted when they get there, really. Um, he also says, how did my uncle die? And he says, he died of shock. Yeah or fear and it's just like okay something scared him to death this is interesting Sid gets back with his fish and chips and he, he says he does, uh, meet, he does meet him on the <laughs> stairs and he says who's that guy and what's going on there And because Ernie's packing his bag already yeah so, and he says do you want to go with me he said I'm a bit scared of that guy to be honest with you and he's like uh, do, do I want to go with you oh, go on then I'm your buddy I'll go with you there's a bit of a bromance between them yeah, they, they, they do work all right. Like, like I don't think at any point, because it's funny, he's packing his bags, and it's like, oh, is he going to tell Sid? Because they both don't look like they're making a lot of money in the like where they're living and stuff. And he says he doesn't make that much because he's got his proofreading job. Um, so I don't know, but they do have a little bit of a buddiness to him. And I'm glad they do, because you kind of want Sid James as your backup, really. He's like, he, you can tell that he could probably have a fight if he needed to, or he could he probably talk like, his way out of something if needs he be. Looks like, yeah, both of those things, actually. I reckon if a group of guys surrounded you, Sid James would throw a few jokes around. And if that didn't diffuse the situation, he looks like the kind of guy that would wink at me, pick up a bottle. Kind of like Del Boy. 
smash one of them in the head, punch another one in the face, and before you know it, it'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, like Del Boy. Yeah, because Del, 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 Del I've been watching loads of, I'm, fucking, I'm on Series 5 now. Del Boy, um, I haven't watched much Magnum, though. Del Boy um, looks after Rodney like that. Um, same sort of thing as this. It's kind of very brotherly, because he, he, Ernie's a little bit smaller, and Sid James is a little bit taller. He's not stocky or anything, but... Yeah, but he's Sid James. He's got big old meaty fists, isn't he? You won't want really to mess about with him. Um, talking of uh, going on tangents, I watched the movie last night, randomly. Again, I recorded off TV. I'd never seen it. I'd always yeah. wanted to watch it. And Sid, um, David Jason was originally cast to be in it, but he was replaced by Phil Collins. Uh, Buster. Have you ever seen Buster about the train? No. Um, oh, it's really good, actually. I really enjoyed it. I don't, uh, I don't like Phil Collins, though. Fuck. Fuck off with your drum kit. That's what I say. <laughs> Fuck off with your drum kit. But anyway, Buster was good. Um, moving back to, to this movie, though. So, we're on a steam train. Yeah, like Sid and Ernie have gone. Choo choo. And it's, it's your classic turn up at the train station and it's deserted. Apart from the creepy man. Apart from the man that Ernie talks to, then when Sid turns up and says, What guy? That guy, and there's no guy there. I love classic, that. I classic. Love that's a classic one there. And again, you know, you feel like you're watching a, a film like um, Young Frankenstein, where, where where all the cliches are there, but you're getting a kick out of them all. Well, it's well, good. It's good well, fun. Now you get a, a bit from Drax the Prince of Darkness, the Hammer horror movie, where the uh, carriage driver will only go so far. This is old Fargo. You can go up there to the oh. castle. I won't go any further. Um, that's that, and they do it with this. The taxi drivers are. I'm not going any further. Well, he's not a taxi car. driver. No. Oh no, a he's a, oh no, he's a funeral um, car so, driver. So he says. Uh, he says, oh, I can give you guys a lift. He says, this is a hearse. I'm not sitting. He says, can I sit up with you? He goes, no, nah, there's plenty of room in the back. <laughs> yeah. And he says, um, what does he say? Uh, something about being a Rolls Royce. I can't remember what he says that, but it's just, it's just, why is he, why are they driving in a hearse? Yeah. And like, like you said, he gets there and he says, the mansion, what's it called? Black, Black Shore Towers. That's it. Blackshaw Towers is half a mile up there through the woods. I can't go any further. What? Yeah. And then he says to them, mind the bogs. Yeah. So so basically, they've just got to go off in the moors with <laughs> like swamp, which the will swamp. swallow them. Yeah. And, they, and he drops... He drops, he drops Sid's, Sid's, Sid's whole suitcase. suitcase. And he gets melted and eaten by the black bogs. Which is great later on because when they because they share a bedroom as well and they even share a bed they, they, like, and they they oh, and he's like well uh, Sid's like give me your pajamas well oh, no they won't fit you just give me your pajamas anyway so because he, he lost his suitcase he makes him wear it. and Ernie's really small and Sid's bigger so he wears these really tight fucking pajamas it looks ridiculous while Ernie finds a massive white uh, old school gown to wear it's brilliant Alice Alice said because she was watching a lot of this with me she said. They remind me of you and Gav. <laughs> at this point, she said, I can imagine you two, one of you losing your luggage, turning up at some bloody mansion, and, one, and Gav going, give me your pyjamas. And you going, oh, you're, I'm not letting you wear my Ninja Turtle pyjamas. And then I'll have to wear because then um, er, Ernie ends up wearing a long nightgown, doesn't he, at that point? Yeah, I, <laughs> so, I, I, can, I can actually imagine this happening to me, you and I, as well. <laughs> Sharing oh, a bed dear. together as well. Don't, don't be scared. I won't be scared. Oh. Well, don't forget, um, the podcast on Haunted Hill was conceived in a hotel room in Wales. It was indeed. In in uh, in uh, Suicide Capital, I think. Yeah, Bridgewater. <laughs> Fucking uh, Bridge End, sorry. Bridge, Bridge End. end. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, mind the bog, suitcase gets eaten. They arrive at the house. And, and what, we... what do you get? What do you get a big, it's not a joke, but what do you get at a big mansion when you go there and it's a black and white one and it's raining? You get a bit, you get a scary butler. That's what and you get. You get, you get a wolf howling oh, for some reason. Ooh, werewolf, there wolf, werewolf, there wolf. <laughs> there, castle, there wolf. <laughs> werewolf castle. <laughs> um, the door creaks open, of course it does. And yes, um, we go on in. The house is full of expensive arts and valuables. So we get the impression that Ernie's uncle was absolutely minted and he could be onto a bit of a winner. And you can see Sid's eyes. Ding, 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 ding. Already thinking. <laughs> well, he, he had that in the idea when Ernie told him what was going on anyway. He, that was 
that was something that Sid did think of. But uh, that's because, you know, it, they are mates as well. But at the same time, Sid's like, you know, back in the day, it's one of those things, isn't it? Like, you know, we haven't got much money, so we do what we have to do. Um, yeah, so they turn up and you do meet one of the members of the house. And then, or, or was it straight upstairs? Oh, no, no, I'm thinking no, of the no, next they, movie. Now, you meet Guy, um, who's Ernie, one of Ernie's cousins. Now, Guy is played by That's somebody right. called Dennis Price. And I had to look this guy up because I thought, with a name like that and the way he looks and his build, he must be related to Vincent Price. But he's not. Um, but he's really similar to, to Vincent Price and is even called Dennis Price in real life. But, uh, yeah, cousin Guy loves a drink, always on the brandy. Yeah, um, yeah. We also meet Fisk, the butler, who's, you know, your stereotypical lurch... Uh, from the Adams family, um, there was never a butler in uh, the Monsters, was there? No. It, funny enough, in the eighties, when uh, Gene Wilder did uh, Haunted Honeymoon, there was Fister. <laughs> Fister. Oh my God, <laughs> Fister, the the butler. <laughs> oh, that is just so. What knockers? <laughs> um, sorry, we're getting onto a different film. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. So they meet Fisk, the butler. Now Fisk is played by Michael Goff, who most famously for me was in the Tim Burton Batman movies as Alfred. Yeah, he's been in a few little horror movie things and stuff. He's a more of a classically trained actor. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's a, bit, a little bit of pedigree for the film, actually. Um, they're taken off and shown to their rooms and they're actually shown to separate rooms in separate wings which Ernie freaks out about Sid loves winding him up because he says this will be your room sir and Sid's like oh <laughs> lovely look at this and then uh, Ernie says well, what about me and he says you're in a different wing sir and he, Ernie Ernie starts sweating you know what, what on my own what I've got to go off on my own yeah. and Sid just goes <laughs> Sure, you'll but be all right, son. The, the butler takes him to him and This is your bed, sir. The master died in it, and the, and the shape of oh, the bed oh. is still there from someone. It's like uh, it's like um, Norman Bates, his mum's bed, because there's that dip in it where he always like, puts the body. It's just so the master why, must have died uh, like like what last week? Like, oh god! So have these been changed because the shape is still the same? That's kind of gross. My notes say Ernie has to sleep in the dead bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's quite funny, really. We 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 meet the rest of the family now, um, who are all bickering and arguing. Um, Malcolm is playing the organ. Um, he's a weird, weird character. He just um, is a guy that just like stares into space and doesn't really speak. Uh, yeah, but he's apparently, apparently, really... apparently, apparently he's completely mad. Well, the, the whole family are alcoholics and or lunatics. Um, and again, you, you get, it's that British, you know, whether it's... Like, Clue isn't a British film, but it feels like it should be. That kind of, you know, these these possibly inbred British alcoholic perverts who are all related to each other. Someone's died and they're all fighting over the will, you know? It, it, that's that's essentially what the, what the story is here. Um, Sid introduces himself he pretends to be ernie's uh sort of financial advisor doesn't he he um yeah i'm his financial advisor okay. yeah but this hilarious bit now is where where ernie gets his foot stuck in a tiger the tiger skin well, rugs mouth. It, it's it's well it's just everything the, the basically the family are just like who who's but they're talking before ernie's there with sid like who who's this person then? And because they they look they look at him as a commoner, someone of a, a lower class to them, uh, someone who has no money and only there probably to get the money. But obviously the will legally binds him to be there, and they don't have a choice in that. But they're pissed off by it. this a family member they've never really known to just come into their thing and possibly could take some of what they think is owed to their money, which is terrible when it's inheritance that people think like that. Um, and I love the fact that when he goes to walk up to him, because obviously he wants to make an impression. When you go to meet someone in certain situations, especially this situation like that, you want to come across as a, you know, you put your best. And he goes across, walking across the floor with a squeaky shoe. <laughs> and it's just like that real subtle thing, just to make him that little bit like, why can't he afford another pair of shoes? So they're looking like that, but it's comical for us. But yeah, tell to say what happens next. Oh, yeah, so he's, he's, he goes. Doesn't he go to shake one of his cousins' hand? A female. It's uh, one of the cousin. women in there. He goes shaking. He pretty much punches her in the groin almost as he goes to it <laughs> instead. But 
but he gets his foot stuck in the uh, the, the the lion the tiger's, skin tiger skin yeah. rug on the floor with the tiger's head still it's pretty gross nowadays really um, or was then as well um, and gets his head completely stuck in it Sid 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 and has to get Sid to try and help him get his foot out so he just comes across as a prick basically uh, yeah. or a prat should we say and they're all looking at him thinking oh for fuck's sake um, Donald says Donald Pleasant says he's going to be reading the will yeah. Um, which is, you know, they're all there for. And this is where Linda arrives. Um, who, my notes say Linda. She's hot. Yeah, she's quite a beautiful lady. She's beautiful. And um, obviously, straight away, Sid's like, well, things are looking up, you know. Sort of... <laughs> he really is. <laughs> it's because so that's kind of what it is. Um, oh, Look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. That's his voice, that croakiness sort of uh, he quite likes it, so he says, oh, why don't you sit here, love, and makes Ernie stand up. Uh, so Ernie just kind of wanders off to look for a chair, and they're like, Donald Pleasant, like, we can't start the will until everybody is sat at the table. So they're all waiting, but she nicely oh. says, oh, you can sit here, me, and he shares a chair. So he turns his back to Sid and says, thanks very much, and just sits down with her and stuff. And Sid's a, bit, a little bit gutted, because obviously he thought he was going to be right next to the lady. Isn't this the bit where he picks up the chair and... and- or is that a bit later? He, he does pick up a chair and he has an issue trying to do it. He can't do it. And so she says, come sit down. Because he's, it's, again, just been showing his weakness, his, his it's ineptness. That, um, it's that Austin Powers humour. Like, it where, is. Where he's, where he's, everyone talks about the scene on Austin Powers where he's in the truck and he's moving backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And there's this scene where it just goes quiet. And as you said, Donald Pleasance says, I can't read the will until you're all seated. So Ernie goes off. He finds a giant throne almost, like a vint like a, an antique throne, which is far too big for anyone to lift. And he attempts to sort of lift it and squeak it across the room and after a while and it goes on for ages and they're all just waiting there. Sort of oh for God's sake. Yeah. Eventually he just gives up and sits on the edge of the chair with the woman. Yeah. But it's just so funny, and you just it's, you're hiding behind your hands, cringing like, oh, where are you? Yeah, you're feeling for him, and you do. It's quite nice. You do get have that sense of like, oh, bless him. Um, what well, the will is read, and nothing is left to the surprise of most of the members, and unhappiness of quite a few of them. Well, Linda, who turns out to be the nurse of the deceased, she gets left all of his drugs, and it's, she just laughs because obviously it's an in joke. Yeah. And she just laughs at that and goes, oh, amazing, like that. Um, yes, but what else? There's nothing else is left out to anyone, is it? No, at this point, nothing's left. No. The lights suddenly then get cut. Because we do obviously have a bit of a twist later we on. We do. We do film. have a twist coming up. Um, Bruce Willis is a ghost. Indeed. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong film. Uh, then there's a thunderstorm, which means that the lights get, the power gets cut. Of course it does, because Thunder we're lightning. in the middle of nowhere. Very, very frightening. Yeah, I was going to, I don't know what I was going to say then. Um, so they go with the butler. So a couple of the guys go with the butler to find the fuse box. And the fuse box has been vandalised. Well, they have to go out into the rain because they've got like a, uh, oh no, they, oh, the fuse box has been, that's what, so they, oh, that, that's where the generator is though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so they had to actually go outside to another place in the pouring rain. So it's the butler, Sid and Ernie? It is, yeah. Go and have a little look at it, and it is broken indeed. And then on the way back to the house, they find dun 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 the first dead body, a dead uncle, evening. dead Edward. His name is, mm. uh, and uh, one of them says the line, the classic line: "The murderer is one of us." Yeah, so we're straight into murder mystery uh, territory, which is you know, something I very much enjoy. Yeah, all, so all, the fa- all the family are pretty much suspect at this point. You, there's, no, there's no everybody. This is the thing. When you ever have a because it, it's uh, it's been done. It's just have its own. It probably does have its own subgenre of murder mystery. You, you know, you got murder mystery. Then you've got subgenre that is the inheritance murder mystery. So it's always someone is obviously could be it because they all could be entitled to a large sum of money or etc. It's, it's been done a million times. That movie came out recently with Adam Sandler, Murder Mystery on Netflix. Exact, oh, exact same thing. It's a murder mystery on a boat, and it's an inheritance, and nothing's going to be given out. Or it's going to one person, and, even, the, and uh, the will's changed. Even Knives Out, you know? Yeah, they're all the same. All the Agatha Christie's, everything. That, it's been done a million times. It's the easiest one to do, because it puts everybody pretty much 
as uh, it could be the killer. Looking forward to um, the new um, uh, murder of death on the Nile. It's very much been delayed because of things like Army Hammer. Ooh, he's a meat eater. So, uh, going back to this movie... Ernie starts flirt- he gets a bit flirtatious with Linda, you know. Yeah. He could he could have a chance. Sid's not happy about this. Sid no. picks up the phone and he discovers that the phone line dun, dun, has, been dun. Cut. has been cut. They are trapped. They are now cut off. There's no internet. Oh no, there was never any internet in nineteen sixty one. So the phone line's been cut, the power has been cut, there's a thunder and lightning storm, they're in the middle of Yorkshire in a mansion, they're trapped and they're surrounded by the Moors. Yeah, so they're basically fucked. They are fucked. <laughs> so it's a case of, right, like, let's go all go to bed. You know, we all well, stay in our rooms, individual rooms, which is another thing we've done many, many times. It's like, right, it's uh, night time, let's all go to our own rooms, you know, just lock the door. Yeah, Donald, Donald Pleasance delivers the line, we are all suspects, I suggest you lock yourselves in your room for the evening. It's so if classic. Donald Pleasance delivers that line, yeah, you, you do what he says. get in your room and you lock the door. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me in some ways as well, uh, and we've covered this movie, of Haunted Honeymoon a little bit as well. Um, yeah, all of these yeah. movies. We love all of these kind of movies, don't we? Absolutely. Um, so there we go. Uh, so they did, Gar- they did a sleep swap over pyjamas like we spoke of. Oh, yeah, because his pyjamas have been eaten by the... What, what you they, and I would do is Alice. Says. It was, but it's just so cute because Ernie, you know, in 1961, men back then, British yeah. men wore nightgowns, you know, a very long nightdress with a little pointed white hat, like Wee Willy Winky. And it just looks ridiculous. But that's what men wore, I guess, back then. I suppose well, it, was well, that was, and... it was a little bit at that point then, that was. You can see, look at them, like, what the fuck? But it wasn't too much that if you and I were somewhere now and you wore that, I'd be like, the fuck are you wearing? And they'll be like, that yeah, is no, amazing yeah. that you're going on Instagram. But... I'd go, hang on, Gav, I've got a match one for you. <laughs> yeah, that, even get that on. <laughs> I, I'm fucking, I'm there. Except we might look like Ku Klux members. <laughs> we but... look, look like Bert and Ernie, I think. I guess. Um, oh, hi, um, Bert. hi, Bert. Hi, Bert. Hi, Ernie. So, yeah, it's quite funny, but I think Sid, does, it's not that far fetched that Sid doesn't. Mo- he doesn't like how I'd be like, what the fuck? He's a bit like, oh, look at you, oh, for God's sake. But it's they are. You know, I think at this point people have changed, well, especially guys in London, and possibly not like big mansions out in the middle of nowhere, cut off from the world. Yeah. Well, before we get to that sort of pajama scene, um, a couple of bits happen. Uh, Ernie is roving around, and he he bumps into cousin Guy, who seems a bit suspicious again. The guy who's staring into space, and he accidentally ends up in Linda's room, um, and she says, "Oh, do do you mind if I get undressed while you're here?" Of course, he doesn't mind, but he does face the other way like a gentleman. Um, so behind him, she sort of strips down to her underwear to put her her uh, night night attire on. Um, and she asks him, she says, will, will you keep me company this evening? Now, he's been waiting for this moment all night. Mm. What does he do? He runs away. He does run away. <laughs> and... He runs away and he attacks a suit of armour. <laughs> Well, out, he thinks out in the corridor. In yeah. He attacks a suit of So he goes back to bed with Sid, and Sid's he's kind gone, of. He's gone from having sexy Linda to Sid James. Underwear. To Sid James. It Telling him to shut up, I want to go to sleep. Mate, I want to go to sleep, shut up. Now, um, this scene. This it's scene, quite funny, isn't it? This scene is probably one of the funniest scenes in the film. It made me laugh. It went on. Probably longer than I would have liked, but actually didn't outstay its welcome. It's perfectly simple, innocent humour here as well. And on top of that, it's very risque for 1961. Two, firstly, two men to be in a bed anyway. But, yeah, but I didn't secondly, even think about that. But secondly, to imply that one of them is feeling the other one up. Because basically, guys, they're they playing, get into no, their bed. They're playing a tickle game, they do, don't they? They, they have a tickle game, but there's a cat under the bed, isn't there? The cat gets under cat the Cat snuck into the bed, yeah. And they think that they're playing tickle, tickle, With tickle. each other. Mate, leave it. I want to go to sleep. Well, imagine, though, you and I are in a bed, yeah, and we're, we're <laughs> like, bum to bum, like, facing, like, uh, facing outwards, both of us, so we're not, like, facing towards each other to go to we're sleep, not, which you spooning. would. You would do that. Yeah, we're not, yeah. And I mean, we'd we would then all spoon. of a sudden, oh, I'm trying to go to sleep, but you give me a little tickle. <laughs> 
I'm going to be like, like, oh, yeah, that's kind of funny. But if I turn over and start tickling you, we both tickling each other in bed. Is it a little weird? It is a little weird. Got to say. Let's go with it. Let's see where we go. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they 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 get annoyed with each other because they keep thinking the other one's tickling well, the other Sid, one. But I think though, if Sid wasn't tired, I think he would play the game because eventually he does kind of laugh and they both are kind of like he kind of gives into it, which is hilarious. Like, what would you both start tickling each other? What the fuck? And then it turns out it was just a cat that got under the. Imagine the... being in bed with Sid James. You want to go to sleep and he just keeps tickling you. Be really weird. I'm sure Sid James has tickled quite a lot of people. I've heard some not great stories about him oh, and his behaviour. I, I imagine there's some, there is a few stories, yeah. Um, Ernie breaks the tension because he, of course, needs the toilet. Yes. In the middle of the will night. You, will like, you come with me, Sid? No, <laughs> no, Ernie, I'm not coming with you. He's like, fuck, look, I've just been tickled by the cat under the covers. I'm not going to the toilet with you as well. So, so he... he it's classic though here it's lovely sorry to cut you off then but it's like him with the nightgown on with a candle walking through oh, a blacked yeah, out insane. corridor I, I yeah, see he, I'm gutted because you probably had an alright copy it was HD you know it was on, it was on okay, TV okay I had a very very blurred copy I couldn't I really see what's it, going on you, you, you can watch it if you're ever if you ever allowed to come around my house ever again you can watch it with me I would like to see a legit copy. I was gutted I couldn't see a good copy of this. I, uh, I, um, I was too late to buy one, and it's about 15 quid for a DVD. So there's not many out there, and I don't probably just don't know what sort of quality that's going to be like either. There's no Blu rays, you know. Yeah. It's a very, very. I never even knew of the movie, so, you know. But it, it reminds me of the sort of Abbott and Costello, you know, but the pointed hat and the candle, bum, 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 yeah, walking around yeah, the mansion, classic, that kind classic. of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and he, we see the shadow of, of someone followed, with a knife. Followed by a knife killer. Yeah. Um, they almost stab Sid. Sid doesn't see it. Sid's such a hard man. He just doesn't notice that he's about to get stabbed. Um, and Ernie finds the music room with the organ in it and thinks, ah, oh, I'll have a little go on this in the middle of the night. Yeah. I'll wake up the whole house. My first thought, now I've got children, was, you're going to wake up the whole bloody house. But... Doesn't matter. He sits down and what does he play? The classic chopsticks. Of course he does. <laughs> and uh, Malcolm comes in, as a Malcolm, and yeah. joins him. But Malcolm has a knife in his back. He stabs, yeah. Uh, but oh, it's a weird one because the, 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 the room, the door's all shut. And they're both playing the organ. All of a sudden, it's just stabbed. They turn around. There's no one there, and it's, the doors are still shut and stuff. It's very weird. To be fair, I always, I always make sure that all the doors are locked when me and my cousin are playing with our organs in in the. Uh... So no one catches. You. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yes, you're right. So that when they find the body, they and they find Ernie. He's obviously a suspect because, as you say, the doors locked on the inside. The doors are locked. He must have. He must have killed his cousin. Well, that's what the other family members are like. What well, you've obviously done that. But Ernie, he suspects Scooby Doo. He suspects there are secret rooms and passages. Yeah. Uh, because the room is locked from the inside. He's mucking around with the organ. You get your classic. <laughs> Again, I'm thinking of Gene Hackman. <laughs> When he's stuck, not Gene Hackman, Gene Wilder, when he's stuck in the spinning bookshelves. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But he says, the other button. Push the other button. Yeah. Um, because he presses a button on the organ and it spins a secret passage around. Sir James is in the secret passage. Brilliant. And I, this film goes up a level for me. As soon as you introduce secret passages into a mansion... You, you automatically go up a level for me because yeah. I love a secret passage. Everybody loves a secret passage, Dan. Oh! Hey, <laughs> <laughs> matron! Well, I don't tell you what, I've got up for a bad passage. <laughs> When just before they find the uh, uh, the secret passage, I do like the fact that the one of the family members says to the other family members about Ernie. Uh, says like, "I don't think he's the fool he's trying to make out he is." And Ernie says, "Oh yes, I am." <laughs> <laughs> I know that's so good. Isn't it? It's a classic. <laughs> yeah, they're starting to suspect him now. Um, they think there's more more than meets the eye. No one could be that inept. No, but uh, unfortunately, he is uh, inept. 
Um, what happens next? Uh, oh, yeah, the mirror rotates, the secret passage. Um, they all discuss this. They all convene uh, together in one room, don't they? But then the eyes of a painting change oh, to an actual is, human's eyes. This is your classic again, again. painting eyes. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, a blow dart. <laughs> oh, I just, I just scared the pussy which is on my lap. Meow. <laughs> Sorry, um, Jamie. Come on. Kill, kills, kills cousin Janet the blow dart and they blame they blame the butler fisk for this one um so they run down to have a go at him and sort of blame him and he is asleep with a cigarette in his hand now this cigarette is his alibi because it's just a long stick of ash and they conclude that he must have been there for a good 30 40 minutes asleep with a lit cigarette Otherwise, the ash would have crumbled. Yeah, well, he, he's deep engrossed in Lady Chatley's uh, Lover, the book. <laughs> so he's basically reading adult erotica. Um, and, the, yeah, he hasn't moved, so the ash is high enough. So Donald Pleasance... I think it's Don, Is it Donald Pleasance? Uh, he smiles over to Donald Pleasance. Yeah, yeah, Donald Pleasance is one says, look, he hasn't moved because his ash is... He so hasn't basically... We... His hand hasn't moved since he's been let his cigarette burn all the way down. So he didn't he didn't kill the person. But we realise, when he smiles at Donald Pleasance, we realise, hmm, there might be more to the butler and the solicitor than meets the eye. Mm. Mm. Well, Auntie Emily thinks that she um, saw and spoke to Gabriel recently. She's mad, Auntie Emily. We should probably mention her. Yeah. She keeps sort of saying random things. That, I spoke to Gabriel the other day. But Gabriel is the person who died, the uncle that died, and whose will they're all there for. So they all think she's mad. Mad as a box of frogs. There's no way that Cousin Gabriel uh, could be speaking to her. But um, she's very uh, convinced that she spoke to him. Um, Ernie finds another secret passage. <laughs> oh, I don't want to crusty. This time you... <laughs> This time he comes out of the coffin that his cousin's body is, is his uncle's body is supposed to be in. Yeah. Ooh, uh, twists. And this is interesting. So um, he brings people back to the this coffin to sort of show them. And they, they said, well, there's a body in there. But it turns out it's actually a mannequin with a mask on it. So some of them start to suspect that Gabriel hasn't died and might well be alive. And then... Whoop, whoop. It's the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop. It's the sound of the beast. The policeman turns up, um, and he, he, they try to explain what's happened to this policeman, and he says, "Well, there aren't any bodies. So what? Are you, what are you all talking about?" Yeah. Come and have a look at the coffin. Yeah. Coffin's gone, Gav. Yep. More more bodies turn up though. Hang on a minute. Three bodies. Who, who is this inspector? Who is this policeman? Yeah. Turns out he reveals to them he's wearing a mask, it's a disguise, and it's actually Uncle Gabriel. It is. There's the twist. The cop he just pulls the mask off and he yeah, he's he's the one who's they've gone there, who's died, whose will it is they're being read. He's not dead. He's not, he's dead. not dead. He said, My alibi my reason for doing all of this is I am sick of my family sponging off of me and I want to kill you all. Fair enough. Fair enough. fuck. I know how he feels. Oh, yeah. No, well, I don't. <laughs> I don't have loads of money with my family sponged off me, but yeah. But that's his whole reason for setting up this whole thing and getting a really cool policeman's disguises. He didn't want any of them to get hold of his money. He just wanted to see them all suffer. But, so. but Ernie hasn't... Ernie didn't even know this person existed. No, he didn't. Poor Ernie. So he's, he's just, just cutting there... off will toys, isn't he? He sat there proofreading shit erotic 1961 novels that didn't really have any sex in them. He's basically being cut off so that the will can't... Um, any of his money, if he dies, goes to anybody, I guess. And his main weapon, Uncle Gabriel's main weapon, is a pack of dogs that he hasn't, hasn't fed for fed 10 for days. 10 days. And he says... <laughs> yep, Smithers... Release the hounds. That's a essentially. I don't know if you've heard of um, Simpsons. I think Simpsons. Is, I have yeah, heard them. Yeah. That is a cartoon. Um, yeah, he releases the hounds. However, and then he runs off. 
runs off. And, and he meets happens. the butler who's lighting the fire. So the butler and him have a little bit of a tuffle, so, so to speak, doesn't he? And he's, he's, there's a fire set. Oh, that's right. And Fisk drops a chandelier on him. No, he shoots at Fisk and it hits the wire of the chandelier, which falls on him, killing him. So it's like, well, that's the point. So then Fisk goes down to save them all. But they're not dangerous dogs anyway, because Fisk, says, like, Fisk says, is like oh, the no, master wasn't. Them. Yeah, the master wasn't very nice, so I feed them every day. I've been feeding them a couple of times a day. So they weren't hungry; they were just happy to see people. Um, and he lets them out. And... Donald Pleasance died. We we forgot to mention he was just sitting oh, at a pond die, really fuck. randomly, and he just falls into the pond because he's been killed as well. And then the final kick in the balls, really, for poor old Ernie, who's been through hell, is. He says to Linda, do you want to go out for some time for something to eat or drink? And she says, oh, that sounds lovely. I'll have to chat with my boyfriend, of course. Yeah, and then this dude turns up in his sports well, car. it's Adam Faith, a singer, famous singer at the time, Adam ah. Faith. So it'd be like these days, it'd be like... Um, Justin Bieber. Yeah, or someone like that, just showing up as a cameo. Right. So he, he shows up, takes her off, and you, sort of, you feel a bit sorry for him, but... You know what? He's been through an adventure, but he hasn't changed. He's still Ernie, living with Sid. Hey, well, he goes and back they... to the organ, finds the organ, he starts playing it. Sid, organ. Sid all of a sudden comes in, and they start playing chopsticks together. But the combination of the keys they're pressing means that they open up another secret passage, and the whole organ, including the seat they're on, sinks into the ground, and that is where we get the end come up. Oh, she's um, have a part two. And it's just fucking brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And... I would like to thank you very much for introducing me to this film. It wasn't. It's not like a groundbreaking. No, it's not. No, um, I'm it's not, not. I'm not going out of my way to tell people about it, or you know. I, I gave it a six out of ten on IMDb. Okay. Because it was it was better than an average. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't um, a young Frankenstein or any of those kind of movies. But still, a really good time with it. I was. I was playing along with, with the mystery element like I do with these films, but also I was laughing at some of the jokes. I was excited to see the characters from um, the Carry On movies appearing in this and Donald Pleasance. And it was just everything about the setting, the secret passages, the murder mystery, the will. It's just literally perfect for me. I love all that shit. And I had a really, really good time with it. Yeah, good. I'm glad. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it's, it's something I'd like to pick up at some stage for my collection of a fairly all right copy at least um i enjoy it i'm going to come back to it every once in a while and be like it's a rainy day like or, or if i was ill with the flu or some shit oh. i might go like you know bowl what, of I'm, chicken soup in bed with this i don't oh. like chicken soup i'd go to smart soup but still oh. i would um yeah i'd probably put this on so i'll have this in a cup of tea or hot chocolate or something you quick know? question are you a tomato soup or a cream of tomato soup man Mm. I like cream of tomato soup. I yeah. Think, yeah. I think. If I if I brought you a tray with a bowl of cream of tomato soup and four slices of white buttered bread, mm. put this film on, and tucked you in the little blanket. How would you feel? <laughs> Pretty good. Can it can it be like seedy <laughs> seedy uh, uh, brown bread though? Are you wanted seeded brown bread. That's Please. fine. You don't, you don't want thick white cut bread, no. Whatever. Whatever. Wherever, yeah. however it comes but not white bread but for, just thanks. making a note I'm just making a note I want to make sure that your 50th goes off with a bang ooh great <laughs> well there we go that was uh, what a carve up or uh, I'm glad you liked in it. other places no place like homicide or no place like homicide doesn't quite work with my accent sorry no. about that so do check it out if what we've said to you sounds like it, it's it, you'd fancy watching it it's a bit of innocent fun it really is it's not something incredible it's not you know and big... if you're a carry on fan and yeah, you fancy you something different probably should give it you would really yeah you'll really enjoy this um probably would do well actually doubling up with um uh carry on screaming or something like that so there we go yeah all absolutely. right cool cool all right man well gav it's your birthday and i've got the time machine playing a little tune of oh it's not working shit I programmed it. Bloody hell, this always happens. I programmed the time machine so that as I pressed time travel button, mm, yeah. it would play Happy Birthday, but it's fucking, it's not working. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. No worries. Don't worry. I, well, I we, appreciate Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, look, just get in it anyway. Okay. Get in the time machine. Okay. Get your little birthday hat on. Um, and I've. I'm in my birthday suit. Uh, of course you are. 
always. Uh, if you'd like to pull my lever, oh. <laughs> we'll, we'll go back to 2017. Are Here you ready? Let's, Let's do it. All right. Hang on. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your uh, time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be the time team. The time team. Whoa. Whoa. What's this? Look at that. Look at that. Whoa, he's been dead a hundred years. Look at that. Look at that. That's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand. Whoa, there's a dinosaur. Oh, my God. Look at that. It's something else. Whoa. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Thanks, man. Here we are, 2017. 2017 wasn't long ago. If you look at, look at the numbers that we're at now and the numbers then, it wasn't long ago. Don't remember much because so much fucking stuff's gone on in the past couple of years. <sighs> Have a clue. What happened? Well, let me take you through some of the uh, the main things that happened uh, in the news or pop culture, and then we'll go through the films, and then the main meat of the matter, the horror films that came out in 2017. So... We had the envelope fiasco at the Oscars this year. Oh, yeah. Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway came Warren on stage. Warren Beatty being a bit too senile, I think, really. And just Well, actually, somebody had given him the wrong envelope, bless him. In all yeah, fairness, yeah, he'd yeah, been given yeah. the wrong envelope. And instead of saying it was Moonlight that was the winner, they said, La La Land has won Best Picture. And it Why was actually... do they have different envelopes if they already know what the winner is going to be? I don't know. It's a strange one. There's probably a reason Is that for be- it. It must be because all of a sudden they were like, we don't want to accept it. It's weird, isn't it? I guess. But but poor old Warren, he looked very confused, didn't really know what was going on. But um, there we go. There was a tragedy in Manchester, 2017. Oh, was this a stadium gig? It was. Ariana Grande was performing at the Manchester Arena in England when a suicide bomber exploded a device and killed 22 people and injured another 100. It's absolutely de- disgusting and devastating. Um, really a shame and put a lot of people off going to concerts for a while. Some of them are very, very young fans as well. Uh, would have been very much traumatised by that too. Yeah, really sad stuff. Um, there were, unfortunately, uh, a few terror attacks in yeah, 2017. Was this London ones as well? Well, we had ve- the Vegas concert shooting. Okay. Where the guy checked into a room in Vegas with loads of guns and just shot out of the window that into was the crowd. That was insane. That was a West Country and Western gig, wasn't it? Killed 58 people. Fucking and, hell. And injured over 500. What the fuck? Um, so <sighs> it was the, the biggest and deadliest mass shooting in US history so I talked about in the in the last episode when we went back in time I talked about <laughs> at that point that was the biggest mass shooting this that was the gay club in Miami I think this is the biggest one it's absolutely appalling it's all- like even just saying it now it's like that sounds like a made up fiction story because like it, but there's no point us even saying I know we're from England blah blah blah, blah and I'm definitely definitely sure we've got some listeners who probably have firearms um, yeah, for course. the reasons which they feel they should have them which I, I, I'm no whatever with it it's absolutely fine if you feel like that that's absolutely fine the, the, it's just unfortunate that the, like guns are made to kill people that's what uh, they yeah, are there's made. people I know there's people I know who guys in America and you'll probably listen to this right now and I know that some of you guys live on remote farms out in the middle yeah. of nowhere and oh, you might have want... weapons for the right reasons absolutely absolutely yeah, absolutely. Sure. but I'm saying but guns guy, initially guy... are not for killing people guns guns are are aimed at uh, essentially a, a using as a your yeah home it's or, to kill someone you know. or, or policing to, because someone obviously knows what a weapon will do to stop them doing something it's just unfortunate that it is, it's, it's so out of control where you're going to have things like this happen. It's well, the, just the guns insane. That, the guns that this guy had were sort of very automatic. You know, we're talking hundreds of rounds per second. Yeah. Um, you know, firing just, that into a crowd of people. And you were right, Gab. It was well remembered. It was the Country Music Awards. Mm. Um, yeah, I just really absolutely, insane. Really, absolutely was. I feel so things. sorry for you know, everybody and all the families of the people who went there that day. You know, who had to hear the yeah. news of what's happened. You know, um, there was some justice uh, in 2017. Uh, Harvey Wankstein. Yes, 
news started to filter out that he perhaps wasn't a nice guy. Well, Rose McGowan, I think, was pretty much the sort of person to really start every because she had been for years. Trying, was it not trying to also? Um, I think it was two people, wasn't it? Maybe. Argento's daughter, wasn't it as well? Uh, yeah, she did uh, afterwards a little bit. That was about six, seven months after, I think, actually. Um, um, but Rose did say stuff, and then uh, people were just going right, yeah, and more people coming forward and. Good too. About and this, time. Well, this started the hashtag Me Too movement, which I think was an amazing uh, movement for women um, and and for men. Actually, you know, there, we had some men come forward as well. I know um, for everybody. Uh, what's his name um, from Brooklyn Nine Nine? Terry Crews uh, has come forward. You know, he was sexually molested. Brendan Fraser. He, uh, he's a big molested. lad. I know. It seems God, weird to just, be select, uh, sexually molested, though. Do you know what I mean? Because you imagine, like, he's going to just knock you the fuck out. But I guess it is, it's not that. It, it's power no, it's, over people yeah. where, where uh, brawn doesn't matter. It's wealth it, and power. Uh, Brendan Fraser, um, even uh, sort of Corey, the Corey stuff, stuff going on. Corey came out, really, with his book around at this time as well. So, yeah, so the hashtag Me Too thing was a huge movement, and... Um, people got in a lot of trouble. Kevin Spacey, Lewis C.K., you know, there's been a lot of... And then we can move forward now with things like Bill Cosby and uh, all the stuff that's coming out with R. Kelly and everything else. I was chatting to um, a friend the other day who popped over and he said he was um, working, because I won't say his name, he was working on a... uh, He was delivering flowers to Kevin Spacey's trailer. And um, Kevin Spacey said, oh, 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 where are you from? He's like, I'm from England. He goes, I love England. Why don't you come in for a cup of tea? And he tried to get him in for a cup of tea, and he said, no. Nah. So mm-hmm. he goes, no, what, all the rumours you hear about me are they're, they're, they're lies. And he had a joke of stuff, Kevin Spacey did. Mm. Tried to get yeah. him in for a cup of tea. He said, no, come on, come in, come in. in- interesting. <laughs> well, this was kind of like... Um... Black Lives Matter, but for for sort of sexual harassment and sexual abuse, wasn't it? Yeah. This came, came before that, and and similarly to Black Lives Matter, you had people, in my opinion, wrongly saying, "Oh, here we go, everybody's at it," you know, hashtag Me Too. Oh, everyone's talking about it, but actually, good because, unfortunately, and I am a man, but unfortunately, I'm sad to say that. The majority of men are absolute scum and assholes who, who weren't brought up in the right way or, or don't have the right morals or the way of thinking and think it's okay to treat anyone, especially women, in certain ways. And uh, this was the year we saw things change, or start to change at least. Yeah, you're still gonna you're still gonna have cases of it. It's always gonna happen. But you'd like to think nowadays people will think twice before they go and try and do something which is not acceptable. Indeed. Um, we also had a couple of hurricanes hit uh, the US. We had Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and Hurricane Maria. So not a good year um, all round. Beyonce was pregnant. Um, woohoo! Uh, also, <laughs> don't care. Prin- <laughs> Prince Harry and Meghan Markle got engaged. Woohoo! Uh, don't care. Um, and everyone was talking about The Handmaid's Tale. Um, and woohoo to that as well. <laughs> I don't know nothing, um, but I can't tell you from that. Um, well, it's happened. I think uh, that's I think, it. I think that's it for 2017. Yeah. But you know, the movement's good. The, the movement to get get people like Weinstein out of uh, yeah uh, power is is good. So that movement did start, which is good. Which is something that's needed to happen. Which should have happened. Which many 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 moons ago we, really. we as a podcast of champions you know the whole wine scene is a cunt we, I, I'd like to think we're the, champions, of, of champions of kind of respecting each other yeah of course it's about uh, it really, isn't it? just treat each other like how you want to be treated do you want to be bummed by a big sweaty man no well if you're a big sweaty man don't bum someone then yeah you know like Jeez, I mean, team. I wouldn't mind being bummed by a big sweaty man in the right circumstances, but it depends the circumstances, I guess. Yeah, you know. But um, let's have a look at what uh, films came out in 2017. Just generic, more mainstream films before we head down the dark alleyway of horror. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Number one grossing film of 2017, top grossing film was Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. 
Oh, okay, yeah. A lot of superhero films, Gav, so don't have a go at me here, but Wonder Woman, Gardens of the Galaxy 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Justice League, uh, Lego Batman movie, uh, and a couple of other bits and bobs came up. So there was a lot going on. We had another Transformers movie. Marvel were making some bucks that year. They were. They were. There was a, two Star Wars films this year. Rogue One was also at this year, which I know is your favourite of I these like, spin-offs. I like that one. Yeah. yeah, no, and I respect you for that. In fact, Air High Five very good um very good beauty and the beast was also high on this one wonder woman um uh despicable me three logan that's another bloody uh, marvel film fast the, the fast and the furious or the fate of the furious as it was called in the u.s dunkirk i quite like that that was quite good dunkirk have you seen that oh uh, yeah i saw it in the cinema is that nolan yeah, it was. Um, yeah, really good film. I, I'm a massive fan of the uh, music score, actually. Oh. They used a, there's a special notes they used in it. And it's a it, well, it's a way. It's not a note. It's the way you lay up the uh, notes of a song um, of a piece, a music piece, where you can keep it ascending and going up and up and up forever. Ultimately, oh. so you get to a certain point where it starts to run out. And then you bring another layer underneath it, but it's so suddenly done, you don't know. So it's just like the never ending build up. And uh, that over the horrific images and stuff, the way it's been shot, it's a really good movie. Absolutely stress and juicy. Sort of cinema. It's a bit like, whoa. Uh, Kong Skull Island came out this year, which I was a huge fan of that one. It's uh, yeah, good fun. I, I chucked it on, uh, I've, I have seen it. I chucked it on recently, though. I just uh, got through about half of it because the kids pay t- don't, can't pay attention. But I just kind of started watching it in the living room because it was on Netflix or some shit. And uh, it's really good. There's some really nice things in it. There's some really good imagery. There's this one image of the uh, dude who's in, who's in that uh, Marvel movie is Loki's brother or Loki or something. One of those guys. Oh yeah, Tom Hiddleston, no key. Yeah. And he's walking along with a, a, a gas mask on, with this green smoke behind him, um, chopping up uh, like dinosaurs as he's going along. And the imagery is gorgeous, so yeah. nice. It's a good movie. That'd good make cast. a post. That'd make an amazing poster for you all. You know. Um, we had um, <laughs> a, a sequel to one of your favourites, Paler Shade of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get it wrong, man. Listen, uh, Fifty Shades Darker came out this year. Uh, Baby Driver, um, which I'm a big fan of Baby Driver. I love that. Um, yeah, yeah. Murder, Murder on the Orient Express, which we, we chatted about earlier. We had a, mm. John Wick John Wick 2 as well. Blade, Blade Runner 2049. I, I went to cinema for most of these films, though, which is quite funny. Um, the, no, Mummy the Mummy with Tom Cruise. The Mummy with Tom Cruise. What the fuck happened there? I uh, saw it on an airplane, actually. So, yeah, I did watch it, yeah. Another one of your favourite films, genuinely, Baywatch, came out this year. What do you mean one of my favourite? I don't like Baywatch at all. Oh, sorry, it's Chips that you love. I fucking it? love Chips. Amazing. Really good. Baywatch is fun, though. I've not seen it all. I saw about half of it. It's really rocking it. And uh, pretty boring. Zac Efron. Yeah. Zac Efron, yeah. Um, we also had Murder on the... Did I say Murder on the... Yeah, you did. I think you I did already. Um, the Hitman's Bodyguard... Uh, and also a really great Christmas movie came out this year. Uh, I know another big fan of it for you is uh, Bad Mums Christmas. I saw Bad Mums in the cinema with my ex-wife. I, I know you hated it. So uh, much. She actually apologised to me after we'd finished we came out of cinema, and I said, "Fuck, did you make me see?" It was apologised to you for because film? she thought it was awful as well. So she okay. came out and went, "That's I'm really sorry." Like, Fuck, she, um, she had free tickets. We could have seen any movie. And something else came out, and I was like, why don't we watch that? And I was like, oh, okay. There was a really good Christmas movie for me that came out this year called uh, Daddy's Home 2. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it. Mel Gibson, John Lithgow, Mark uh, Wahlberg. Oh, yeah, no, I have. I have. Um, yep, yep, I like both those films, first one and second one, really. Me they're, too. they're fine. They're, 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 they're fine. They're, they're Sunday afternoon, I'm cooking, it's on Netflix on my iPad. F- fine, you know. Well, it's time to open up the door to the horror film. What's going are you, on? Are you ready for 2017 horror films, Gov? Are you ready for this? Do it, do it, do it. First of all, we had a little Spanish movie called Terrified. Oh, yeah. Good film. I really like the film. Not Scary. to be confused, Not to be confused with Terrifier. Which I've not seen. Which I didn't like. Terrified is... is, is... Why it's scary at times, it's a bit like, oh, fucking hell. I need to watch that again. It's good for Yeah, the, the scene with the child at the, the table. In the kitchen at the table, yeah. Fucking hell, fucking hell. Um, 
we had quite a few comeback films so these will pop up along the way first one of those is jigsaw i don't even remember it i've seen it i don't remember it oh it's on uh amazon prime now don't remember it at all oh no spiral that is sorry sorry yeah i don't don't remember jigsaw um leatherface don't remember that i've seen it i don't remember it Uh, the new texas chainsaw massacre comes out in february on netflix i know Uh, Basically, it was made. The company uh, sold it to Netflix because it was so badly reviewed. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> the, the directors were fired after like one day. The two brother directors and then other directors came in. The producers walked on set and said, "What the fuck is going on here? Right, you're all fired. Fuck off." Yeah, it's going to be. Then. It's probably going to be an absolute shit. That's Sorry, shit, shit. But, but I obviously. thought Wrong Turn was going to be shit, and uh... yeah, and it was. What? Oh, okay. I really liked Wrong Turn. I didn't. I got through about twenty minutes, of it, so I can't really judge. Actually, that's really bad of me to try and judge a film. It makes me look really negative and shit. Uh, I got through it twenty minutes, and I was like, "This is bullshit." I'm not. T- I'm turned it off. Okay, you you really need to watch more than twenty minutes. It, about forty minutes into it, it flips, and you might enjoy it. It's made a lot of people's top ten lists for the for last year. It was it was like performance or acting or something was just really like oh I'm not watching this. I will tell you what did come or, out. Or in 20... it, I, actually no I don't remember no I can't remember the reason sorry. 2017 there is a movie that you and I need to review at some point. Ritual. Love that film. What a film! What a creature at the end of it! What a fantastic setting! Kind of the new tattoo I've got recently is kind of inspired by it because I've got like well, I've got a skull's head of antlers on it. Uh, it's kind of inspired by like the uh, the monster with the antler hand sort of thing. Kind of it. It's like uh, dog soldiers, but instead of werewolves, it's folk horror. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. Absolutely loved I it. I love the the perfect free act structure of a film. It really is. The first act sort of going in the woods, getting lost. Second act in uh, no first act, all the everything going along. Second act in the woods. The third act, whatever happens, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone if you haven't seen it. But yeah, good yeah. film. We should probably do it one day. I'd like to do it. I'd like to do it. Um, Alien Covenant, which we've we've covered, and actually it's not that bad. Mm. It's not that bad. Yeah. Um, it comes at night. Oh. Oh, matron. <laughs> he comes every night. <laughs> I've not seen it. Uh, it, chapter one. Yeah, yeah. Good, good movie. Life came out this year. Uh, I really enjoyed Life. Have you seen Life? Yeah, I've got it on DVD. I really enjoyed it. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Um, another movie, I think you really enjoyed this one as well. Cult of Chucky. Is that the one in the uh, the house? Yes, it's the one in the house with the girl in the wheelchair. With Brad Dourif's daughter. Yes. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that one. Yeah, that was good. We talked about Mummy. Uh, I mean, Tom Cruise in the Mummy movie. This. Let's talk about what the fuck up this was. This, this was going to be the monsters, sort of dark universe, uh, Universal Monsters Dark Universe. So it was going to start off with this one, and then obviously we got introduced Invisible to Invisible Man with Johnny Depp was going Johnny to be Depp. One. We had Benicio del Toro was There's going to be man, a Wolf it? Man. We had um, no, not Benicio del Toro. Uh, was it? I can't remember who it was. It was going to be Wolfman. No. But we also had Russell Crowe pop up as Mr. Hyde, Jekyll. And it, 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 on paper, apart from the Angelina Tom Cruise Jolie, one, Angelina Jolie was the bride of Frankenstein. Why start with the mummy and Tom Cruise? Why Tom Cruise? It, it was just... It, I'm surprised he did it. Uh, it, it, could have been, uh, it could have been any Mission Impossible film. And they just added a supernatural element into it. It was just weird. Um, it, I don't know. It's a shame, really, because the Johnny Depp Invisible Man, if it was... It could have yeah, been I'd right like if it was that. done properly. That could have been right, because you've not going to see Johnny Ru- Depp much. Hang on, imagine Russell, imagine Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe's Dr. Dr. Jekyll, Jekyll Mr. Hyde is actually quite good. He's an insanely good yeah, actor. That would be quite good casting. So he, Him changing into the, not, an angry... Tom Cruise and the mummy. Like, why start with the mummy? Who cares about the mummy and story? Also, like, I'm not being sexist, but it's a female mummy. Like, I don't really... Like, okay, I, I'm all for like flipping the genders and stuff, but... If you're going to make the the star of the mummy Tom Cruise, then make him the mummy. Don't make a female mummy with Tom Cruise fighting it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Any sense? Yeah, it's, it's just a shame. It, it, they fucked up. They they they. I don't know what 
they were looking at for this. I don't know if Tom Cruise was probably driving it and telling the producers what this and that. <laughs> I, thought, and that. I thought you were going to say Tom Cruise was probably drunk. He's <laughs> probably wasting it. it. I do like the fact, though, in the movie, though, they actually crash down near where I live. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. uh, and they actually say, oh, we're going to crash at like Wave the Abbey Ruins with it. And that's really weird because the site they shot at is called Wave the Abbey Ruins and it's just literally in my town, which is where... really weird. 28 days later, hot fuzz, and I walked your dog there a couple of times. Yeah, and it's funny, I turned up to shoot some stuff there uh, on uh, the day all planned, and we couldn't get in there because they were oh shooting shit. the mummy. There was that night me, you, and Andy went there Yeah. to film some spooky shit, and that fog rolled in. Yeah, we went there. Yeah, we lost right. We lost our shit. We, we heard some noises, didn't we? Do you remember? You lost your shit. I, I pooped. Yeah, watch the videos. Anyone can see the videos and see you scared. Anyway. Happy Death Day. Really big fan of that one. Um, Meh. Slightly more so than the, the sequel, but I think they're good films. They're good fun. Oh, unfortunately, we had a shit film about this year. There's another remake. Fucking Flatliners. Yeah, have you actually a uh, remake? Your yawn says it all. Yeah, sorry. It's fucking terrible. Cargo. I was really looking forward to this film with Martin Freeman transporting a baby across the desert while zombies attack them. I was bored out of my skull. Have you seen it? Yeah. Uh, I watched it with you. It's terrible. Me and you sat in your living room and watched it. Uh, Hats and cowboy pants. Probably. Or chaps. Pants and cowboy hats. Yeah. Revenge. Now, this was a good film. This came out this year. Have you seen Revenge? Yeah, I think I have. The lady in the uh, desert or pretty much. Oh, it's so damn good. Mm. So damn good. Bye Bye Man, terrible film. Annabelle Creation, terrible film. Um, what else came out this year? Uh, let's have a quick check. To be honest with you, is any one of the film worth mentioning, Gav? Or two. Mother. Oh, yeah. A fan of it? <laughs> Okay. I'll tell you one film I know you would have liked that came out in 2017. Get Out. Get Out. Yes, uh, I am quite a fan of this film. That's probably yeah. why, uh, I don't know. Really like that film. Really like it. Jordan Peele, excellent job. Well done. Love it. Don't, yeah, don't really... Just don't say the word us to me. That's I'm not going to. to. He's got another one coming, angry. coming out. Got a new one coming out called Nope. Um, we also had a couple yeah. of other stra- stragglers as well. We had Ghost Stories, the British one, which was I thought was absolutely brilliant. I yeah, loved it. in my DVD collection, and I've seen the play. Oh, really? Why? Mm. Um, Mum and Dad with Nicholas Cage. Yeah, I've not seen that one. It's fun. We had a Christmas musical zombie horror called Anna and the Apocalypse, which was really good fun. We had One Cut of the Dead, really one of the most in- original films I've seen full stop let alone horror yeah. just an incredible film all the way all the way around um and 1922 i just wanted to mention because i loved that film it's a stephen king movie on netflix cool that's 2017 i would say it's a weird year um there is a lot of weak films and a lot of films that are uh, average but I would say, for me, I would I would come back clutching Ritual and Get Out. Yeah. Holding those close to my heart. I'm with you. I'll hold your copies. Oh, let's all hold them together. You hold my copy, I'll hold yours. Hard copy? You want to hold my hard copy? Is that what you just said? Yes, Daniel. Fantastic. Well, that's 2017. God, should should we have another trailer? We're getting close to the um, the present here. Well, hang on, let's hop back in. Okay. And uh, don't sit on that. I've made. I'm sorry because I'm in my birthday suit. I've made uh, I've made what? some marks what? What on your that? on your white upholstery. For fuck's sake. I'm sorry. It... Right. Let's just go back to the present. Can I we'll sit in up. this chair instead of that yes. one now? Please do. Let me put this bit of plastic down. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Right. Right, let's go. Ready? Okay. Right. Three, two, one. Once in a lifetime, there comes a story so gripping, so vast, that only the motion picture screen can capture the full force of its emotion. 
And only a superstar could do justice to this theme. Anybody there? played empty houses before, but God, blimey. What hidden terrors lie in wait for this unsuspecting stranger? Anyone in there? Oh, dear. <laughs> what mysterious force has lured this man to this nightmare of a house? Oh, Foster. Hmm? I need your help. I understand, my dear. Who is his old friend? Mr. Twelfree is the great tragedian. He's here to provide her entertainment. She lies where she lies. In her grave. Hello? He's never gone that well before. Damn moron. Now watch it, mate. Man's a cretin. That's better. You've misunderstood. Oh. We were keeping it as a surprise for you. The others are all mad, you know. Quite mad. Children, children, it is midnight. God. Bound and bright. Children don't come in the nursery for the dolls dance every night. Take your hands off her. No, no. I was just unbuttoning her frock. She's fainted. I'm going to smash you to an inch of your life. I was just giving her my little nail. There comes a time when a man must ah. turn and fight and meet cold steel with shrewd cunning. Ha-ha! Now I've got you, haven't I, Mr. Clever Dick? You'll have to kill me to get them. With the greatest of pleasure. <laughs> Catch! Mere courage is not enough. This isn't going to be excruciating, is it? I mean, I don't mind agony, but I draw the line at excruciation. <laughs> what lies in wait, we cannot say. If you slip now, all the diamonds in the world won't do you any good. For there are some terrors which have no name. Please make it a crush and not a biter. And all of them dwell in the house in Nightmare Park. Ha! Ah, that'll teach you! You thought you were dealing with an idiot, didn't you? Ah! So that was a trailer, I hope, for the house in Nightmare Park. Do you reckon they do a porn one, the house in Nightmare Park? Yeah, definitely. I don't work anyway. And a, and a Disney one, the mouse in Nightmare Park. There's a mouse in my house. The house in Nightmare Park from 1973. In 1907, an actor is invited to perform in an isolated, that's a good word, we like that, country house, and becomes involved in mysterious and dangerous events this is an hour and 35 minutes it's a pg parental guidance as i said it's 1973 and it's a comedy horror mystery yes pretty much same vein as what we had in the other film yes pretty much. Um, starring the classic uh, legendary oh <laughs> <laughs> Frankie Frankie Howard for anybody who doesn't know Frankie Howard he is a British comedy, comedy actor um, he was in some of the Carry On movies uh, he was in Up Pompeii he is just this um, slightly camp but also not just very eccentric sort of like oh I, I, that's all he does he does that noise all the time doesn't he it's just it's just he is Frankie Howard what can I say about him? I know. I'll just very quickly see if I could try and find a, a him going, oh, like a sample of him on YouTube, but I can't. <laughs> oh, no. Hang on a minute. Oh, 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 oh. He sort of does that really weird. Again, as with all the Carry On cast, they all have very specific ways of talking. They all have their own catchphrases. So Frankie Howard is in this one. And as the synopsis sort of tells us, this is, again... One of these sort of movies where you're invited to a haunted house for a reason. In this case, it's slightly more original than the other ones. He's an actor, you know, uh, and he's asked to come perform some of his his skits and his uh, best work at this this country house. So he does. He yeah. gets paid a nice little bit of money for it. 
Well, that's what he's hoping, isn't he? Yeah. It is what he's hoping. So, um... Yeah. This... How did you come across this one? Oh, come across! Oh. Uh, as a child, um, I was always looking for any any horror movie that would was on the few measly channels we had. Um, so anything that came up which said sounded like it was a horror movie or something, I would uh, record it or whatever, like on the VCR. And uh, this was one of them. And as a kid, I watched it, and I'm. I just remember having my breakfast one morning, watching it uh, on a Sunday morning. But I think my dad might have recorded it for me because like, that movie looks well good, sounds well good, Dad. Can you get it? That, you know, House in Nightmare Park. So I've got to watch it, whatever it is. I don't know. And uh, I just kind of liked it, but then I kind of totally forgot about it. And then probably about ten years ago, it just popped in my head, and I went on Amazon. And I was like, "Oh, sweet!" and ordered a copy, and kind of enjoyed it again, um, quite nostalgically. It's not like some incredible movie. It's not, oh, it's an amazing movie. It is the DVD is in my collection. It's going to stay in the collection. It's not a movie I see that often, um, but I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like it. It's kind of a real innocentness to it again, with. Innocence is the same with that other film, really. It just, it, I don't know. It has a bit of nostalgia value to me. It's got some of the carry on, well, Frankie Howard in it. So that's it, really. I don't know. I've got, you know, I enjoyed it. How about you? So I think I, I think I'd seen it only once before, and not that long ago, probably in the last sort of ten years. Um, didn't really have a lot of connection to it, but I remember getting it muddled up with um, Heist by the Cemetery. Okay. For some reason, I thought I thought it was like an Italian directed, really grimy, you know. Well, house it sounds like it. Park. It's from seventy three. It's it. It does sound like that a little bit. But I also got it muddled up with the Kenny Everett movie. Um, uh, okay. Doctor, uh, what was that one called? Um, Bloodbath at the House of Terror. Uh, Bloodbath at right? the House of Death. I said that, whatever, whatever it was, I always, I used to get that muddled up with this as well. Which, which again, we've covered that one as well. And that, that again's a British comedy with slightly things. That was a little bit better actually. I had a bit more of a pedigree with like Vincent Price in it. Actually, actually, wasn't too bad. It's funny that that was only Ken Everett's only film, which is weird. It's a good budget. And he was a, well. he was a DJ in England. <laughs> it's just random. Um, but this one also has Ray Land. Um, which people might know from many, many films. Actually, I watched him really recently, The, the Man with X-Ray Eyes. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was in loads of films and quite a lot of classic sort of films as well. Um, I'm going to sort of name a few. Dole M for Murder. Um, the Uninvited. Yeah, have, you some of the, have you seen The, the Uninvited? Stuff. Yeah, I love The Uninvited. Absolutely really love it. Really good film. So, yeah, he was in like a few sort of all right for things but then he, he did sort of start doing a lot of horror towards the later end of his life which I just think it's the easiest way to get money I guess really but also that's a flip isn't it because a lot of people start off with horror in their career and then move into the more mainstream so he decided to go the other way which is cool you know yeah um What's interesting about this film is it's set so much earlier than a lot of the, the other films in this genre. It's set in 1907, as we mentioned. So, you know, it's way before a lot of technology and any of that kind of business. It's just, and it gives it a very, a bit, a slightly more unique. And that's how Frankie Howard was. So Frankie Howard was always, he was very famous for playing um, a, a Roman emperor i think it was in a british comedy show called up pompeii yeah um where he was he would sort of walk on and he'd talk directly to the camera and he'd sort of talk about what the romans have been up to one of his catchphrases was they don't like it up em. i think that was one of his catchphrases was well, it I'd, probably i remember uh, watching that program a little bit as a kid and not really understanding what I was going on but i liked him going oh so I just thought, um, that, there we go, you know. So, like, basically, if, if he walked in on a woman in her underwear, he'd go, oh, sorry, oh. And, that, that, you know, I know we've done this noise a lot. I'm not going to do it anymore now, but that's essentially why we keep doing it, because it's just Frankie Howard. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's kick things off, then, Gav. Yeah, what's, what's going on? In, um, so we start off, basically, with uh, old Frankie Howard's playing this uh, character, who, um, a tw- a 12, is he 12 trees? 12 T's? What's his name? Yeah, yeah, Foster 12 trees. So he Foster is, 12 trees. He's giving uh, an acting masterclass to this room full of 
children who are blowing raspberries at him. He's doing like his sleep. monologue stuff. He's doing his little nail. Oh no, that's later on, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when he shows his little nail. Don't show my little nail. I was Ooh. just showing her my little nail. Uh, he is just going for it. He's going to town with all these different. He's doing every character in the the scene. You know, you, you can imagine how hammy and cheesy this is. It's, but it's, not, it's, it's 1907. It's people a room, are falling room, asleep. Yeah, people falling asleep. It's a room of about 20 people, if that. And there's a bunch of kids at the front taking the piss out of him. Like throwing shit and sticking the feet up at him. And um, and we we just get a guy arrive outside who says, he sees him, sort of looks, shakes his head in disgust, and walks back out and says, I can confirm it is he... And you think, oh, what, what's he done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Ray Milland. Um, but I love the bit when he's he does his show and he he goes off instantly goes off stage. Everyone just instantly stands up and walk off, and he walks back out to get a second applause. Coming out and expecting <laughs> them, and no, everyone's walking away. So he quickly just turns around and walks off again. It's not. It's a very very fast, speedily <laughs> joke there, and I quite liked it actually. He's very he's very good comic timing, Frankie mm. Howard. Yeah. Um, really great score, I will say. Uh, the score is absolutely really, really good in this. Really good credits I, as well. Great credits. The old school black and white kind of like silent uh, film. Uh, look really good. Yeah. Really gets you in the mood for what you're about to watch. Yeah. Um, really cool stuff. Um, yeah. He's, so he <laughs> he's he's kicked off a stagecoach again half a mile from the house yes just like our last film but he's because he's, he's invited to do this gig and he's gonna get paid handsomely to he doesn't go know to anything this. about it he doesn't know anything about it he doesn't even know what what they want him to do <laughs> uh or perform so he's just going out to his mansion he's just basically got no money he's he thinks he's an incredible actor uh, thespian and uh, he's a bit shit um, so, so, but he's deluded that he's great kind of like a lot of people nowadays with uh, <laughs> with the f- a famousness on uh, yeah, social media nowadays isn't business. it really yeah yeah. Um, he, he feel, thinks he is and so he's invited out to this place but he doesn't know what he's going to perform for them but he's, he's like well I don't care you're going to give me a lot of money he doesn't even prepare that because later on later on just to jump ahead he says, I think I'll probably do one of the scenes. And it's like he hasn't even really thought through what he's going to do. He's just like, money, money, money. I'll go out to this mansion. And yes and no. I guess it's like me if I was a DJ. Like, obviously, I, I, I need to prep beforehand if I'm going to take vinyl. Uh, take what some thing records. It is, if, it's, well, you, you, it's, if it's a birthday party to a wedding, you, you, different, you've got to play different sets. Um, so, uh, But if I had all my records, like he has all of his comic stuff there, and it's in his head and his props or whatever... If I had all my vinyl there, I could would get that. Okay, what's my crowd? Okay, cool. I might cater it for there and then. So he might be so prepped and versed in all of his acts that he doesn't need to. He can just wing it for the audience. Well, he jumps on the stagecoach, like we say, and he's kicked out of it half a mile from the house. Again, just like the last film, he's lost in the woods. It's very windy. Um, he's trying to find his way through to this mansion. There's Things a woman aren't looking great. in the woods, isn't there? A- well, a woman crying, then a woman screaming. Yeah, freaking him so, out totally. Of course, uh, being the gentleman he is, he runs off in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. It, we just kind of know straight away, really, just a few bits of thing, bits of the way he's acted. We kind of know the person he is. Yeah, he's not like He's not like he's Ernie not going to be Sid. a hero. No, Ernie and Sid would have at least tried to help a woman scream in the woods. He just thinks... He's probably quite selfish. <laughs> runs away. Yeah. To be fair, as he runs off screaming, there is a huge lightning uh, strike just as the house appears before him. So it is pretty spooky stuff. Um, it is a big spooky empty mansion too. Well, there's no one there the, when the it gets classic, that. Yeah, classic mansion, yeah. But there is a woman in the shadows as the audience we see very subtly behind him, someone watching him, a lady. Lady. He finds he finds one of the rooms in disarray. I've re- I never use the word disarray in my podcast notes. In eight years of podcasting, I've never written the word disarray. That's my stage name. D- disarray. Yeah, that's what I stripped to. My name's Disarono, and this is <laughs> and you're disarray. You sound like some god. Disarono is a a drink. <laughs> there you go. 
So he finds a room in disarray at Chair October, a bit like the old man's house from um, the Burps when they go in and there's a chair and not over a TV on. Um, got to mention the Burps. Well, it's, it? it's, it's just it's not his bedroom. It's just like a living room, isn't it? It's just yeah. a bit like, what the fuck's going on here? The record's just playing and playing. It's got to the end and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then again, to further emphasise his character, another scream from upstairs and he says... Oh, I'm off. Oh, that's it. No more. I'm off. Ooh. He says, I'm off. He just runs. Yeah, yeah. But the butler grabs him and says, oh, hello. Oh, I see you're here. And he's like, no, I'm off. I'm going. And he goes, no. And he doesn't let him take. He just grabs his bags and sort of rips them off him and takes them off up to his room. And um, it's, it's an East, Eastern fella, isn't it? Is it Indians or fella is the butler? Because well, we have this whole it's, it's thing not. with India and and the mystery elements of India and the stuff and the things. It sort of goes through this movie, actually. Well, here's the problem. Oh, it's uh, a, okay. white, a white man brained yeah, up with yeah. a turban on. Yeah, yeah. And they've called him Patel, but he's actually just a guy from, a white guy from London. But yeah, yes, he is an Indian, for the sake of the story, an Indian... Um, turban wearing butler um, and he is quite a big strong strapping fellow he takes his bags off him and then the host shows up uh, the host Stuart Stuart and he He's gives Ray Frankie a bit of a uh, well not a massive tour but they come across a statue which is quite terrifying and he says this is the, the goddess of death we call her the dark mother now, yeah, and again, it's, it's, again, all of the Indian mythology. Am I watching it? an Argento movie, The Dark Mother? Do you know what I mean? It's House of Nightmare Park. It was, I, I always remember being quite interested in that uh, they went this route and they have snakes and these gods and goddesses and stuff. Um, and, and this mythology, it's very interesting to go that route. What's also interesting is that they they allow the plot to sort of just unru- unfurl in front of you because we assume un- unfurl because we we assume that um, he's been hired to, to act, but it's not confirmed until this point where he says, "So uh, you've been hired to perform this evening, and uh, we'll look forward to that." What will you do? And he says, Ooh, "Well, <laughs> that was pretty good." He says, I might perform something, one of my Scrooge scenes. And he's sort of talking about his, um, you know, Christmas Carol. He might do that. Um, he's sort of, oh, it's just all, sort of, ooh. <laughs> uh, but his luggage has, um, his luggage, we find out, they take his luggage off and they say, check his luggage. It must be on his person if it's not in the luggage. What, Gav? What? Well, are we they looking don't for? know. But he is also told that now, oh, it's eight thirty. So you'll be going up to bed now. And he's like, it's only eight eight thirty. Why am I going to bed? He's like, no, come on, off you go to bed. And he's showing like his bedroom at eight thirty in the evening to go to bed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Um, so yes, so yeah, there's, a, there's already so already there's an element of mystery. He's arrived at this mansion. These people. It's a bit of a get out vibe. It feels like there's it a lot is. more going well, on there. Well, all what... of a sudden we cut to Ray and his sister. It is like, like worshiping this god. Oh statue. my god! Yeah, they're performing a ritual in front of the statue, um, and they're sort of chanting. Uh, you know, and we don't know what is going on here. Are they going to sacrifice Frankie Howard? Who knows what is going on? Frankie goes into the wrong room as he's wandering around, and he sees like something in the bed and somebody says uh, the, the host Stuart says no don't go in there my brother's in there and he's very ill he doesn't like visitors okay great uh, really spooky why have you got like what looks like a dead body in a room and why are you saying that's your brother it's, it's strange so he goes off to bed and he has a sleep and I've written a note here that says knocker's dream uh, I've got I'm just <laughs> looking at my notes oh Melanie I'm done I'm saving myself stop it He's having knockers. a dream, and he can hear this, this knocking going on. So he wakes up, oh, knockers. <laughs> oh, so Melanie, wakes, it's the knockers. He wakes up to the knocking on the door, and um, he hears an argument downstairs. Reggie wants his money. Oh, he does. Oh, Who's again, Reggie? It, it's a similar sort of vibe to the, the other film we covered in this episode, where there are family arguing over money, you know. Um, they're really un- unhappy about it, and... Um, he says, someone says, my brother is there, is in there. He's, he's, oh no, sorry, no, that's something else. He says, no, what, what's the, what is it? Who is it? Who's, what are they arguing over? Remind me. 
he hasn't uh, had his uh, normal paycheck. Um, like, uh, for some reason, the owner of the house who's died... Oh, well, they don't know he's died at the moment, actually. Uh, the, oh, that's it. The that's person it, that's of the it. house is the, the daddy or whatever who's, like, the f- forefigure of everybody. He gives them their wage like just just because they're a family member they get a weekly that's wage it, that's it, and that's this it. current old army army colonel where was just pissed off that he hasn't had his money and he's like i want my money where's the money yeah that's right and, and he's saying let we, me we, see we... him and raise uh, raymond out or Stuart saying to him no you can't see him he's poorly you can't see him no nope. that's right that's right yeah because he's paying all that's right he's paying them all to just so he says, sleep ahead of tonight, and in the morning, we'll go sort it out, okay? And we we kick off with breakfast. Now, this scene this is, is funny, fucking hilarious, this scene. Um, <laughs> For, you know, because we find that, basically, they understand why they know, which we don't know yet as audience members, but the family all know why uh, Foster, Frankie, Frankie, why Frankie Howard, Howard, has been brought to this house we we yet to find out we we're like frankie we we're in the dark we don't know and he's oh is that is that him is it oh for god's sake and like because they he's already done this this is the guy demanding his money just doesn't want to Reg- just, Reginald, doesn't, yeah he's just yeah. a bit of a dick and he's him an asshole, and he keeps saying horrible things to frank Hammer, and like, him and oh, frankie guy, scum and him and frankie really don't get along and it's very every time they're together they're just saying little snipes at each other and it's so funny it's like there's not ever going to be a fisty cuffs type thing but he keeps saying you swine he says oh i tell you he calls me a swine once more i'm gonna kill him (laughs) and it's just so funny he says bloody damn swine but but they get to they have this sort of face off over breakfast don't they because over a sausage it's a buffet breakfast. So, you know, you've got all your scrambled eggs and your fried eggs and your sausages and your beans. And every time Frankie goes to grab something, Reginald grabs the last one of whatever it is, the last sausage, the last tomato, the last bacon, the last eggs. No, and no, Frankie gets a lot of sausage. He gets oh, he does get the last he, sausage. He shoves him and he says, game, set, and match to me. Oh. <laughs> and sits down with his one sausage. He does. And they, they all go for a walk around. The, oh, no, then... Um, they will leave to have a discussion. He says, you don't want to hear our family business. We're going to leave now. And they leave Frankie. Oh, the see, wait, I hate the fact, I really never like this when just scrapes up everybody's food. I, it's like, if it was listen, just a sausage not eaten... Yeah, I would have done that because I would have been so hungry. Yeah, not it, not someone's half-eaten scrambled oh, eggs, though. get stuck into it. No, I don't want, I don't want everyone's DNA in my breakfast. Oh, I would have that. No, Sorry. a sausage, maybe. Come on. Well, he goes for a walk around the grounds, uh, and as he's walking along, he sees he sees some bunnies. Oh, and he said, "Oh, lovely bunnies!" He just goes up to goes up to the lady. Oh, they lovely, aren't they nice? What are you doing with them? And she's putting them in a sack. She, she, well, she, he's saying, oh, but oh, lovely, oh, I do love a bunny. Ooh. I love rabbits. And he just follows this like woman who's very sultry and well, takes she these... was doing the worshiping. Yeah, and she takes she takes the bunny. She doesn't off. speak, and she just feeds them to a giant python. Well, he follows all the way down to this thing. This glass tank says, "What's going on? What are they doing? Oh, you let the bunnies have a nice little run round. That's <laughs> not that's good, isn't it? Well, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, there's Ooh, a snake in there. A snake. Ooh, and as a kid, it traumatized me a bit. But you don't see anything really. But it did traumatize me a bit when you see the shape of the snake with uh, something inside it, which is probably yeah, cause it, which is probably good. the rabbit. It's a really good effect where, and I say effect, uh, uh, it was 1973. I guarantee they just filmed a snake eating a rabbit for that real. That was what, exactly what happened. But uh, as a child, it kind of made me go, ooh. ooh. Well, Frankie, Frankie faints. He says, ooh, and then he faints. Yeah. Um, so he starts snooping around. He's very suspicious of what's going going on because um, he wakes up in his bed after that. And there's definitely a family feud going on. He enters a room at one point. And there's a strange old lady with her face covered. Really creepy, actually. Um, she's got like this oh, lace. That's well, good. She's got this like lace. Um, he's been told over her face, not to she? go in this door earlier. He does. So what's so. he do? He bloody goes in there. That reminds me of um, uh, the the house of the devil. That kind of thing. Where yeah, you don't, it's, don't go. This, don't is, go this is exactly the house of the devil. This whole scene, especially with the lady in the room as well. You know. And he, 
he enters the room and she's in there with her face covered and oh, so, oh I'm just going to sit down oh yes yes take a seat take a seat and then she grabs this meat cleaver behind him yeah and swings up about to get him and she just swings it down and he sits forward and it just misses him cuts into the back of the chair and then so Patel he's like, walks fuck in that. I'm, he's like I'm packing the leave box this I'm out of here yeah, Patel walks in and grabs him and says, you must say nothing of this. No one must know she's here. Yeah. Um, and, and this is where Stuart explains, you know, this is my mother, but don't let anybody know that she's here. It's, it's all very, like, he's like, look, I'm not getting involved in this. It was really weird. He said he loved his mum so much as a child, he would um, pinch himself so he wouldn't fall asleep, so she would kiss him goodnight. So he'd pinch himself to be bled. Until his mum, do you know how weird that is? Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On a scale of, oh, it's quite up there. It is up there. Well, Frankie is disturbed. Dinner time comes and someone someone appears at the window. <laughs> a spooky face appears at the window. And it actually is just more family members turning up. Yeah. Um, what the fuck are they doing staring through the window? I don't know. Well, yeah. then they just knock on the front door. The, the old, the old sergeant, just in him and Frankie, just go back and forth with each other. Oh, they hate each other. Swine! So much. Oh, if he calls me a swine again, oh. <laughs> um, so more and more family members are turning up. The plot is definitely thickening. And in the morning, uh, Verity is that her name? She goes to to um, Frankie to Foster's room, and she says. Will you come with me and check on my poor, ill Uncle Victor, please? And he says, "Oh, oh, 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 oh. he thinks it's sexy time when she comes to his room." Because Because earlier on, please describe this scene. It's so funny. Well, earlier on, she was uh, pissed off from her dad and ran off screaming. Um, So uh, he did his monologue. Then he went in and started trying to do a little monologue for her, which and that's when the. Uh, she, oh, she passes out when he's doing the monologue because she sees some her face at the window. That's right. And uh, her dad comes in, who's a sergeant, and says, "What are you doing, you swine? What are you doing to?" Because he's like un- opening <laughs> oh, up her blouse. Her he's opening up her blouse because she's passed out. He's trying to give her a bit of air. You her swine! Blouse. What? I was only giving her my own, my little nail. You swine! Obviously, my little nail was uh, thinking it's like his penis. He's giving her his penis. No, it wasn't. It's his monologue. It's his little so nail. Bad. It's so bad. It's uh, so So he thinks he's like you know he's she's going to like him. So later on, she comes to his room. And he's he's wearing a nightgown just like Ernie was in the first. Absolutely, film you could merge these together. That's why they're quite a good double build, to be honest. And he with you. and he sort of undoes the the buttons on there. Says, yeah, oh, when she looks wow, very quick, wow. undoes them like, oh, come in, dear. Come on, dear. Oh, yes. Come on, get in the bed. Oh, and she she's clearly not into anything that he's talking about. She says, "Can you check on Uncle Victor? I heard a noise. Like, why is she just come to this guy to say, can you check? Why don't you go to of dad? All the guys. Go to your father. Why don't you go check on your brother?" Of all the guys, so she she asks him, and he says he says he will, and this is where we get a really cool Sam Raimi style. I don't know if you know it. There, it's this camera shot of the like a diagonal shot of the as he leaves his bedroom with her. There's this crazy camera shot as they walk up the the corridor. It looks Ooh, amazing. I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. Um, and they go into the room where the Uncle Victor is, and he's he sleeping. Goes, Apparently. He's sleeping, yeah. yeah. And he goes over and touches it. And the head falls off, Gav. It's a mannequin. Victor is uh... dead. And then family comes in. And they're just very quickly, the two characters who were at the window earlier were two new family members who also were saying, I want my money. Where's my money? So it's more family members with money on their mind. Mind of my money and my money and my mind. Yes. Sorry, that was my Snoop Dogg. But they internet. are also told, though... The next of kin is uh, Frankie. Yes, they it, they say the money goes to the next of kin, and the son of Victor is yeah Frankie, and he doesn't know this yet. No. Oof. Oof! So the heads come off the mannequin. They all discuss it. He's run away. They've all discussed it behind his back. Um, he may know where the diamonds are. They think. Well, that's diamonds, it because this yeah. the, diamonds. Like, apart from the money, because she says to him, she's fallen for him a little bit. This lady, 
and she's the one that says to them, look, you're the reason they're here. You've been invited because they want to bump you off. You are the real person who's going to receive all of the money and the mansion and everything, but that's not just all of it. He says, oh, I don't need all the money. He says, that's all of it. It's diamonds. Diamonds? Oh, and diamonds. apparently he's been sent something, so he knows the indication, almost like a map or some directions or something of where these diamonds are. And all the family members want the diamonds because they're obviously more valuable than whatever. He doesn't know what they're talking about. He, he thinks this is all nonsense. Well, Reginald, again, confronts Foster um, about this. And he says, yeah, I know that you know about the diamonds. I know that you know why you're here. And if Foster or Frankie has no idea what he's talking about. And while this is happening, his his room is being searched by the relatives for the diamonds. And they find he's got this weird motto, hasn't he? Like a, a Shakespearean motto on a piece of wood um which is got it's, it's a slight misquote and it, they come back to that later on but that's essentially that's where the diamonds are kept mm. um but there's this one of the <laughs> this this bit now throws me one of the new relatives that showed up is a dentist yeah <laughs> and he wa- <laughs> he wants to inject frankie howard um we're starting to kill him yeah, basically, he's so going to kill him, and he's like, it. let's just have a look at your teeth, let's have a look at your teeth, and he's like, oh, oh, go, oh, yes, go and have a look at them, oh, whoa, oh. and then realises, actually, there's something dangerous about this, I think I'm going to, I think I don't like this, and then luckily, Stuart, the host, interrupts. What are um, you doing? Like, you know, they, they explained to him what they were going to do without Frankie, obviously, no, and Frankie leaves. And he says, Frankie needs to get ready for his performance. He's given his performance tonight. Yeah. Um, and he says... When am I going to get my five guineas? That's how much he's getting. Yeah. Five guineas for yeah. this. Um, so he does his performance, and things take a turn down the it road goes, of the League of Gentlemen, I would probably say. It does a bit. It's really weird. They, they, it's, he turns up to do his evening performance downstairs, um, and they give him, like, he does a little bit, and they give him some real fake claps. Like, oh, and the guy, the army guy's asleep. Has he finished yet? Oh, t- oh. Just gives him, like, a <laughs> real fake clap. And then they're like, okay, now we've got a, we're going to do a little, uh, little thing for you. They, they say, we're now going to entertain you. And it kind of turns into like House of a Thousand Corpses performance. And they, they say to him, this is something that we used to do as children called the Dance of the Dolls. And they all dress as adult dolls. One guy does black his face up. One guy's a gollywog, which is yep. not great. And they're all sort of singing about being dolls and baby dolls and someone lets mother out from upstairs with the meat cleaver while this is happening, Gav. Yeah. The weird dance happens and continues on and I I don't know what to say. It's just Well fr- it's actually quite frightening. It's the, this thing. They've got wide angle lens on it as well, real close up to the face, so it gives it that distorted unreal uh, look to it. Um so it does make it a little bit more intimidating. Then the, the gentleman who is his face has been painted black, uh is stabbed in the back. He's stabbed and at this point, Frankie once again says, Oh, I'm off. <laughs> and he runs again. This guy is trying to escape. He just wants to go. He's like, it's not moment. worth my guineas. Yeah. Fuck this five guineas shit. I'm out of here. But um, Ver- Verity says, please. Oh, please. this is where she says to him, you're the rightful owner of the estate. The, the hi- this house is yours. Yes, you're the this rightful is it. And he says, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So he says, dialogue. so he's like, right, I need to go to the uh, a phone box or I need to go to auto or the police station or just get to a phone box. So, right, I'm going to do that. Um, and it's all foggy. Then he sees that now he is basically the rightful heir of the estate, in fact. So he sees the butler and the servant and says to him, like, because he really, the servant really works for him. You know, he is the yeah. head, and I think the servant knows it. So at this point, he says, right, you go to the phone, um, and, he's, and the guy hasn't got a coat. He says, I, I don't have a coat. And he says, right, just take my coat and hat. You go, to, and sends him off into the foggy woods to the phone, the police, to get them there. He also says, a rather derogatory <laughs> thing to him, where he says, it's terrible, really. What does he say? He says, he says and take them bandages off your head as well. It's a turban, Frankie. It's not bandages, for fuck's sake. Yeah. But again, this was 1973. I was watching. Terrible, I was really. watching Only Fools and Horses the other day. In my god, the what, they, what they, they call the news agents and the uh, Chinese know. shop. 
I know, I know. I remember that. It's it, was, all... it was. I'm surprised. I don't imagine those episodes are probably not on TV now. Good I was just like, whoa, because I've got, I've got like the box set. Yeah, it's it's not great. Um, so yes, you're right. So he tells Patel to go to to the police instead. Verity and Foster, Verity and Frankie Howard, they hear a scream, and they find, um, Aunt, uh, what's her name? Um, Who? Jessica. Aunt Jessica yeah. uh, being attacked by snakes. And also Aunt Agnes. And they're sort of lying on the ground with snakes all over them. Yeah. Um, and it turns out, so this is where we get the reveal, that, that the motto that he was sent years ago from someone is a clue. And it came with a birth certificate in it. Um, and within the snake pit is is more of this clue. Is that right? Is that how it works? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was a clue to where it was, and it was in the snake pit. He figured it out. He goes to the snake pit, opens up another thing under a, a, a tile, and there's another clue, which uh, uh, it's in, basically right. uh, it's in front of the house. Essentially, it's going to tell him that's right. Buried in front uh, of the house, and in, in the in the in the area, the meadows. I think it said. And dun dun dun, the power is cut again, Gav. Yeah. As how often happens in these films. Um, so. The clue is Naja, N-A-J-A, initials. And Naja is the name of a snake god. So that means he knows what the diamonds are in the in snake, snake pit. snake house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's not, though. He goes there and he gets another clue. Because he finds he gets this clue from his birth certificate. Um, yeah. That's where he gets it from. Which is very elaborate for this guy to have w- worked this out and said this. Oh, snakes. Yeah. Uh, the uncle is killed. Oh, yep, Uncle Reginald is killed by someone with a scythe. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, and, so uh, Frank, everyone's dropping like flies at the moment. They are. He's always bit... My my next note says, Frankie enters the snake tank and is almost bitten on the bum. Yeah, he's actually pretty calm in that snake tank. If I was bent over and there's a snake who is about to bite... Not my bum. It's like a viper sna- as well. I that, mean. that viper isn't just about to bite his bum, Gav. It's about to bite No Man's Land, which is... Oh, a, yeah. little bit, a little bit of area between the balls Fuck and yeah. the bottom. Yeah, that and is, that, that is... snake is about to grab that. And he's just looking at it going, oh, don't you with dare. His, with his old school wooden tennis racket. <laughs> oh, don't you dare oh. bite me. So now he finds a box in his trap door. He does find a box. Yeah. Um, and in the box is... Uh, well, someone pulls a knife on him at this point. Stuart pulls a knife on him. Yes. And they have a bit of a tussle. They do indeed. But Frankie does get the upper hand and locks him in the room. But unfortunately, he has an axe and goes a bit shining on him. And he then does he puts go... the axe through. The... He's very close to his head when it hits the door. So I was, some good play rewind... timing on that. Now, I rewind that bit a couple of times to figure out was that a rewind shot? How did they do it? No, no. I think they just did it. How could you rewind shot that? Yeah, I think they just did. Someone hit the an axe for a fake a fake axe for a fake door. And it just happened to be shot, a few inch. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. No, no, no. no. Um, but it's nineteen seventy three. Like they just fucking did it. No, they just would have done it. But it would have been like your head's here. We're going to shoot it on the other side. There would have been a little marking of that's where you have it. On the other side, there'd been another marking where his head probably was with a chalk on the door. Go there, go there. Boom. Don't move. Fucking hell, man. You, oh. Yeah. Nowadays, it'd be fucking CGI or done at different times or some shit. Um, but he, Frankie does knock out Stuart. Uh, he ties him up. Yep. Which is great. Uh, but mother, what are you doing this? Mother. He says, uh, and he says, aren't you forgetting something? Because what? Uh, my mother. Your mother. <laughs> Your mother was real, wasn't was real. That was you. I've seen, I was psycho and all these things and all this sort of stuff. And uh, then it, it all of a sudden mum dumps come in with a meat cleaver axe again. Yep. And he ends up fighting with her. Uh, she's pretty strong for a little old lady, um, but he ends up fighting her off. Uh, he uh, kicks the door, um, and Verity is al- we find out Verity is alive, but fucking hell, twist! She she pulls a gun on Frankie Howard. And she was put. She had this planned all along, oh, even to have God. her father killed she didn't really care about because she obviously killed her father and it's all about money so yeah she's ends up not being a nice person spoiler but she says 
you've got the instructions. They were sent to you uh, to find the diamonds. They're buried in the meadow at the front. Yeah. And uh, he says, Ooh, Ooh. they're on the fire. <laughs> and then the instructions are burnt on the fire. Um, uh, the exact map. They're basically in the meadows in front of the house. So the police do rock up and they take all of the family, including Verity, off to jail, yep. leaving Frankie Howard as the rightful heir to this giant mansion, giant amount of acres. Um, all he knows is somewhere there are a lot of diamonds buried in this meadow, and this is this is the payoff. This pan out now because he knows I've burnt the instructions, but all I know is these diamonds are in the meadow. And you, you as the audience are thinking, okay, the meadow outside the, the, the front of the house can't be that big. And it keeps panning out. It is probably about 10 square feet of miles. It just keeps going and going and yeah. going and going and going. Yeah. And the poor guy is there with his shovel thinking, go, I'm going to find these, I'm going to find these diamonds one day. <laughs> <laughs> and that I, love is the, I love the fact he just keeps going all the time. Just, he does though. You've got to see. He does that when he's by himself. So he's there digging all day long, and every couple of minutes, oh, it's a worm. Oh, hello. But you get one of those, one of those sort of classic shots you get at the end of a film, where the camera just pans. It's a big sort of crane shot. The camera just pans right out overhead, and we just see this ridiculously big meadows. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a he's giant. He's not going to do it. That's the joke. He's going to. Yeah. He's got enough money now to live there and eat and stuff. It's just him. He's just going to try and find these diamonds for the rest of his days. You can imagine, and that's, so good. that's his life now. It's fun. It's a really, really fun film. And actually, I actually do prefer this to to, to what I carve up. Um, yeah, it's it's got it's more. Uh, a solid film. It's more cinematic. You got Ray Milland in it as well. But then again, you have Donald Pleasance. You have fun. So. Yeah, I mean, they're both very good, and they both go but well this, hand in hand. This, but this was yeah. the one for me that does it a little bit more for me. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get that. But yeah, though, thank you that for for choosing these two. It's really good fun. Yeah, it's nice. Um, it's nice to cover these because, like, when else are we going to probably ever cover these films? Probably not. I, I've never heard another podcast talk about these two films, so I think that's a first. And and also, uh, yeah, you're right. We we talk about the same. Everyone talks about the same ish films and genres. When are we? Who else has talked about these films? And when am I ever going to get a chance to watch these films and talk about these films with with you? So, you know, if if you can't do it on your birthday episode, when can you? Thanks very much. So I'm glad you liked it. So listeners, um, you know, if you haven't seen them uh, and you like what we said. Maybe check them out. Um, think, you might. Think, you might not. You might go. Oh, this is pretty shit. I don't know. I do, I don't I do know. think they are both on the, uh, YouTube at the moment. I do think. I, I can't um, imagine my kids would go. Oh, I want to go watch that movie. So I think you probably got to be of a certain age and understand yeah. the sort of the, what you're getting into. Well, going back to what we said at the beginning, if you like your carry on films or anything around that, pretty much type, you're gonna you're, you're gonna, gonna like these like two. Yeah. yeah, and I would. You know, there's a very small genre of films like this, like. Uh, we've talked about there are a lot of films related to mansions, wills, that kind of stuff, but this falls into that category of British silly horror, which is Carry On Screaming, House of Nightmare Park, What a Carve Up, and um, Bloodbath at the House of Death. I think, really, you haven't really got anything other than those ones, really. No. And, and they're all perfect. These are all perfect little films for a Sunday afternoon with yeah. a glass of red wine. Yeah, um, Rain outside. Yeah. Love these films. Love these films. Wicked. Well, uh, well, thanks for coming along with that, for listeners. Uh, I, I think we've got to go somewhere strange. I, I didn't see him sneak in. Oh, is that, him, is that him running along, or is that him just tapping his glass? It's point. Thank you very much. Hang on, he's just giving me a glass of rum. Let me just. Okay. Oh bloody hell, Bill! What is that? What do you mean, semen? Seaman rum? What is he talking about? I think right. navy rum. I don't know. I think that's what he means. Right. Well, well. <coughs> Bill Murray's here. It's probably time that we got into some World of the Strange. Take it away. Hi. Welcome back to World of the Strange. Strange. Thank you so, so much for that, Bill Murray, uh, for bringing us in. Oh, Bill, stop that. 
Stop that. Keep your hand off it. I know it's I know it's Cal's birthday, but hand off snakey. Talking of snakes, my first story is about snakes. You ready for this? Can't wait. So this story I mentioned to your lovely lady Sarah earlier. This this could be her if she's not careful, but except she's spider lady. Okay. Okay. How many spiders or tarantulas does Sarah have? Do you remember? <clears throat> um, I'm gonna say thirteen, but I might be wrong. I think it might be seventeen. Oh, I don't know. Don't Sarah. Don't. don't. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, anyway, listen, Maryland. Uh, in America uh, police officers were called to residence by a concerned neighbour of a 49 year old man that they'd not seen for many days so the police broke oh, into no. his house they broke into his house and they found his body surrounded by more than 125 venomous and non-venomous snakes Jesus in the, held in tanks and racks fucking hell what the discover <laughs> just like just covered in them. It just got it just gone wrong. And they'd all got out. <laughs> the discovery oh, by God. the county sheriff's deputies and emergency responders became more bizarre when they established that that none of the reptiles, including a four point three meter that's fourteen feet, were well, harmful. Like fourteen poisonous. feet. Yeah. Bur Burmese python. Yeah. Uh, none of them had escaped or were slivering free. What do you mean? They were just out and about. They just lived in the house. Oh, shit. They didn't have enclosures. He had over 125 of them just living inside the house. <sighs> just, I'm now thinking about, right, first of all, then I first thought, he's going to sleep. <laughs> it just, they just crawl over. He wakes up. Oh, I'm going to have a quick wank. Oh, why? I've got loads of snakes crawling all around the place or or you can't well you can't have a relationship that's for sure because I'm just like you can't do any how are you supposed to eat your dinner snakes just crawl over your dinner like, for fuck's sake snakes crawling over my dinner it's a fucking <laughs> snake in my macaroni trying to cook like for fuck's sake I can't cook I can't do fucking anything there's a fucking snake in the house one of them is a 14 foot python guy 14 me, me and Sarah foot. have been getting annoyed by an erotic girl has been sitting on my lap for quite a gone now cat Jeremy but she is just absolutely mental well imagine just, if Jeremy was that's 14 just a little foot cat. long yeah, that's a little cat, not a multiple amount of snakes. Not saying that snakes are naughty snakes. I'm sure they're good snakes. But what the fuck? I think fuck? some of these were naughty. Oh, I bet some were naughty. But what the hell? Then well, then when they start shitting, snake shit. Ugh. A, a county government spokesperson has said, I want to assure anybody living within this neighbourhood that we've not seen any of the snakes that were not properly secured or could have escaped. We have caught them all. People who How are concerned... She's just saying that. They're just saying that to make the public happy. There's not like an enclosure. They don't know how many numbers unless he had a record. But then they don't know if he's kept up to date with the record. How did he die? Uh, well, let's see if we get to that. The deceased man, who's not named immediately, lived alone. Did not have many friends. No. Did not, did not see many people. Because nobody, no fucker wants to come around. Bob, do you want to come around after work for a beer? All right. What's going on? What? What's going on? Why, why is there fucking snakes everywhere? No, I'm not coming his, in. His friends and neighbours said they were unaware he even kept snakes. Oh, I don't yeah. think he kept snakes. I think the snakes kept him, didn't they? We were unaware he kept snakes, but we did think he had a massive balloon collection that, because the balloons kept going down and making a hissing sound. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> You're not, imagine, you're not going to know, though. Snakes are crawling around on the floor, I suppose. I don't know. Imagine breaking into that house Just and finding all those oh, snakes. Oh, God, yeah, that's what that is. That is like, that's like that movie with the turkey baster. You know, the blind one. Um, Don't breathe. Don't breathe. That's like that movie. Because you haven't got a blind, crazy guy in there. You've got a fucking load of fucking snakes. If you're Indiana Jones, you're fucked. I don't know why Indiana Jones would be breaking into your house, but... Well, there we go. Well, that was your first story, Gav. But how did he die? Uh, suffocation and being bitten by snakes. Oh, yeah. Well, what did well, he yeah. think was well, going to yeah. happen? Well, what, well, did he, yeah. what did he think was going to happen? I don't know. It thought, he thought he was just going to become a snake man. 
He must have lost some of his marbles to be like thinking like that. Let's move on to the next story. Yeah, that opens up too many questions, Dan. I don't know. Next story. I'm not sleeping tonight now. Here's the headline. Go on, him. My strange addiction means I eat I my dead husband's... my strange dig. Sorry, what? Means I eat my dead husband's ashes every day. I've heard of this... A woman has admitted she eats her dead husband's ashes. Is this romantic? Yes. It is kind of. A woman has admitted she eats her dead husband's ashes at least five times a day. She lost her husband tragically to an asthma attack in 2011, just two and a half years after meeting him. I don't know what's (laughs) happening. What's she going to do when she runs out? She married her husband in 2009, and the pair were inseparable before he died. Casey began carrying her husband's ashes around with her for comfort after he passed away, explaining, I take him everywhere I go, to the grocery store, shopping, even to the movies or to the restaurant. That is quite sad. Anywhere I go, he goes. I understand, I understand... Every time I go to the grocery store, I buy the food that he likes. And when I cook, I buy the food that he likes. I don't eat... I don't always eat the food that I cook for him. But I cook it anyway. Oh! Don't cry. Oh, that's so sad. Some some people laugh. They think I'm playing. But I'm serious. He he is and always will be my husband. She's eating a dead, a guy, a dead husband's ashes. She's definitely serious. I guess with the transfer of his remains, some of it got into the cardboard box as well and... And that just spilled onto my hands. So you licked it? I didn't want to wipe him off. I mean, that's my husband. I don't want to just wipe him away. So I, I licked him off my fingers. At least you didn't rub it into a groin. Oh, God. <laughs> oh! oh and here I am today, almost two months later, and I, I just can't stop myself. I, I'm eating my husband. I, I don't know what to say. Casey went on to share that she's lost three stones since she began eating Sean. It's probably the worms. As she rarely eats and prefers snacking on his ashes about five or six times a day. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> but she's going to run out of something. <laughs> first, I lick my finger. So and I then could, I, oh, it's like a sherbet dip, isn't it? And then I don't just dip it in. I swirl it around and get it really caked in on there good. Then I'll then dip. And then I just eat it. It tastes like rotten eggs and oh. sand and sandpaper, but I've grown to love the taste. It started off as just not wanting to get rid of him, and it's progressed into me just, just wanting to eat him, really. I've lost £42 since my husband passed away, because the only thing I'm really eating are his ashes. I bet her farts are really weird. Oh, God. When I open up the urn, I get a sense of happiness. It's like an adrenaline rush for me. And the more I eat him, the more excited I get. Until I realise there's not a lot left in there. I think she needs to get help. I think she needs... It's quite sweet, but she needs to speak to someone because she's still holding on to that and she needs to fucking let go. It makes me embarrassed, ashamed, disgusted with myself. Confused and crazy. She needs to speak to someone. I know his ashes are running low. And I'll need to stop See? eating him soon. See? Because I'll lose him all over again. Ah! Because she won't have the ashes anymore. She's eating them all. That is sad and disturbing, man. She needs it's, to sp- open up and speak to someone and get, like, I don't know, I was going to say get some dick, but that's wrong. She's, she Fuck loves, you now. She loves a fella. Well, I don't know. She needs to move on a bit or something. Or, But no, she loves her ex or her fella, deceased fella. It's sweet, but she needs to open up and speak about that to someone. Well, apparently it's not sweet. Apparently it tastes of rotten eggs and sandpaper. Oh. Well, look. I've never eaten sandpaper, so I don't know. There's your two stories, but there is a third story. Oh, rotten eggs. Because we're talking about... Because it's been quite a British episode with the Carry On movies and the two films we've done. I'd finish up Word of a Strange with a bit of British stuff, Gav. All right. Okay. So these are British or... United Kingdom traditions which seem really strange to anybody who's not from our little island 
and I thought I'd go through. And these just with can you. I just say very quickly, we don't all have odd shaped teeth. <laughs> it is not like a thing that is every fucking British person. I just can I just please clarify this, all right? But we do all drink lots of fucking tea. <laughs> No, 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 no. I know many people don't actually drink hot drinks, even, which is weird. I don't trust someone that fucking love tea. I fucking love tea. I fucking I was actually th- do you know what? <laughs> yeah, they quote that. That's why I was very British uh, line. I was actually thinking about uh, 20 minutes ago, I was thinking, cool, after this, I'm going to make. I was thinking, I love a cup of tea, I'm going to have to make a cup of tea after this. Do you know, I, I miss that you don't drink caffeine anymore because I used to love it when me and you would wake up when I first stay at your house and we wake up and we'd have like three, four coffees no, in the morning. I'm, and fully then we'd on talk. The, I'm fully on the coffee but caffeine Do you remember again. after three or four coffees, me and you would just be talking absolute nonsense about what we're going to do today and then and then your ex-wife would walk in and go, you're not doing any of that. You've got to take the kids to this. You've got to do this, that, that. And we'd be like, no, we want to record 16 episodes of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, I'm fully on the caffeine now, though. So, caffeine. Oh, you're back on it. Yeah, yeah no, I have been for a little bit actually. Oh, um, you sexy bitch! Wow, I can't. <laughs> I can't wait for you to come round. I've got I my Tassimo machine. I've got coffee. Yeah, and love ca- to. I can't do too much though because it makes me go a bit funny. Of course, no, that's understandable. I'm caffeine sensitive, so I have to. It's a drug. It is a drug, after all. Oh, yeah, I'll be having a decaffeinated tea in a moment when we finish. Yeah. You know. Oh, you wouldn't want one this late, would you? No, that's no, 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 it's late. Yeah. Well, let's go through these British traditions. Yep. These are weird and wonderful British traditions. Um, and I know that Bill is excited for, for some of these, Bill, aren't you? Look at him over there. He's dancing around. Um, okay, here we go. So, number one. Now, I'd like you, first of all, to say, tell me if you've heard of these, as I say them, whether you've done them, and what you think. Oh, no, sorry, not whether you've done them. Whether you've heard of them, no. whether you would do them, yeah, and what you think, let's say... An American or an Australian or somebody not from the UK would think of this activity. So number one, this is interesting. Very quickly, this is interesting because um, this is you, an English person, asking another English person who doesn't know what you're, what you're going to say, uh, and for the outside world who are not English to um, um, listen to this. Do you know what I'm saying? And so, I'm, well, I'm interested because number one is cheese rolling. Fuck is cheese? Oh, what? Like actually rolling down the hill, like on the grass. Have you not seen the cheese rolling where they get a big giant wheel of cheese and everybody just bounces down like a cliff, basically trying to get the cheese and they break bones and arms and legs. I have seen that, but no, that's not something I've done or would associate with an English person. <laughs> and you wouldn't do it, a British person, English. Uh, eh, no, I'm too old for flipping myself down grass banks nowadays. I'm my. Is it? It's a nine pounds wheel of gl- double Gloucester cheese. What are you supposed to do with it? Uh, if you win, you win the cheese. Win what? No, the I, know the che- I know the cheese. Well, How do you win that? What do you do? Uh, you just got to catch it and scathe. It, the cheese can reach t- um, speeds up 70 miles an hour. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, let's say, let's an Australian person, what would they think of this activity? I think they'd be into it. <laughs> Do you think so? Oh, fuck me, man. That sounds fucking great. <laughs> fucking right up there. I think they'd be okay. into it. Well, this next activity, Gav, this British uh, tradition, right. relates to one of our films. It's called Bog Snorkeling. Uh, I, I thought you were going to throw right cliches at me. I don't know. What is this shit? <laughs> Bog Snorkeling takes place in Llentrid, Nod Wells, in Wales. Uh, and it's there's the World Bog Snorkeling Championships. It uh, involves two consecutive laps of a trench filled with water through a peat bog, and the competitor who completes the two lengths in the shortest time is the winner. Wales are not in uh, uh, England anymore, are they? They're separated. No, but this is still the United Kingdom or Britain. Oh, I thought they're totally separated from us now, like Scotland. So, so what are your thoughts on this bog snorkeling? I'm just a bit weird would you do this <laughs> weird no I wouldn't because <laughs> I can't swim very well no that would be funny ok this next activity I'm sure you've done this I've done this one and this is very British and only the British would do this and this is dancing around the maypole oh yeah I would have done as a kid and I quite enjoy it when you go to a nice village fate and I love people, doing it people 
dancing around a maypole and hey hitting their sticks and with the jingly uh, bells uh, on their knees so when when alice and i came to visit you and we went to that village fate that time do you remember that yeah um and we looked at each other at one point and we said this is fucking this is the wicker man Oh, yeah. Because it was, it was a little village fate. And I'm not dissing your, you know, where you're from. But it was a little village fate. It had a dog show. Mm-hmm. Where, and then it had the maypole dancing. It had a guess the weight of the bag of sweets. Yeah. And and I, I thought to myself, am I suddenly in the 50s? Yeah, in... that's <laughs> quite a lot down my way. That still goes on every year. It, like this summer, it will be going on again. So come down, it will be on again. Guess the weight of the jelly bean bag, and you can win the jelly beans. I know. I should make some newfound footage movie, but you know, about all this stuff and have a village fate in it. Oh, but dancing around the maple, I've done it. You've done it. Uh, I like watching it. I love watching maple dancers when they're just back and forth, clicking their little sticks in the air and stuff. It's all right. Okay, cool. So you're <laughs> you're into that one. That's fine. Yeah, Not yeah, too yeah. Weird. You, haven't, uh, uh, you haven't asked me what other countries would think of it. I, I don't. I, I think other countries would look at that and think that isn't that weird because I've seen that in so many films. Yeah, that's a real British thing to do. Just go for it, Britain. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Hit your sticks. Go for it. Hit your sticks. Yeah. Um, let's move over to High Wycom in Buckinghamshire. Yep. High Wycom does uh, something every year called the weighing of the mayor. Where they weigh the mayor, and you have to guess the weight of the mayor. Wow. Uh, there's not really a prize. It's just an event that happens. Um, the, re- the reason they do it, they started it because they wanted to make sure that the mayor didn't live off the fat of the land. So they used to weigh him to make sure he wasn't overweight. Oh, it was a joke then. I bet the mayor, probably the original mayor, came up with it. The guy who had loads of money from the uh, people. Let's make a joke thing. And this is I don't live off the fat of the land. I'm see I'm not that fat. But no, this actually if you think about it, back in the day, if it's like um a long, long time ago, if you were fat, you had more money than other people because you had more food. Simple as that. Simple. So I guess that's where it's coming from. <laughs> if you're fat, you're fucking great. <laughs> you, you you had a lot of money, that's how they saw it. Fair enough. I don't think um, that would be too strange to someone not from the United Kingdom. No, I think, no, it's not too I think bad. There are mares in other places in the world, and I think it's got quite a cute little tradition with it. Next one is stinging nettle eating competition. Wow, stinging nettle suck. Mm. This takes place in Dorset on the south coast every year. Uh, dozens of competitors line up to eat as many as two foot long stalks of nettles in one hour. Um, your inside your mouth is going to be fucked. Most winners, people that get through to the final round, have eaten, by the end of it, the competition, they would have eaten about 70 foot's worth of nettle. What the fuck? Who, who, what would you win for that? This started about 20 years ago when a local farmer lost a bet with another over who could grow the longest nettle. And the loser's forfeit was to eat a whole so nettle it, stem. Right. Okay, here we go. Here, the loser, the person who was the loser, was eating the nettles. Why do you mean make it into a game where someone has to try and be the winner of being the loser? Great, I'm the biggest loser. Participants say eating the nettles doesn't actually hurt as much as you might imagine. In fact, there is a small pleasure to it. It instead causes a tingling sensation around your mouth. Like chilli? Oh! Oh! Right. Wow, what do you think of that one? Well, it's a bit fucked, really. It's a bit stupid. Okay, this next one is straight out of fucking uh, Lord Summerall. Okay. Whittlesea Straw Bear Festival. Nice. So it's like loads of bears made of straw. Yep, the Whittlesea Straw Bear Festival is held in the town of Whittlesea every January. It's around about this time of year, and it dates back more than 200 years. It's a festival that sees somebody uh, dressed in a whopping five stone metal and straw bear costume and parading through the town streets while people follow them around dressed as Morris dancers. Okay. I mean, what gets more British than that? No. It was banned in 1909 and was, wasn't was allowed to be redone until 1980 
started again in 1980. Why is it banned? I, it doesn't say, but over 6,000 people attend every January. Okay. No one knows the real reasons behind the festival origins. It, the real reasons, everyone gets pissed. I'm talking to getting pissed. The next one is called the Wife Carrying Race. Amazing. The tradition of wife carrying doesn't have a quaint, as quaint as an origin as you might think. The sport descends from the Viking invasion of 1793. The tradition wasn't revived until 2008. So this is 2008. But the rule of the competition is that your wife must weigh at least 50 kilograms. Any wives weighing below this and must wake up the, the weight using tins of baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> This is so British. <laughs> the fact that they, your wife's got hold of tin of baked beans. <laughs> oh, sorry, love, you're not fat enough. Don't Get drop six, those beans, Mary. Cheese of baked beans, you're not fat enough, love. Don't drop those beans. The annual wife carrying race is held in Dorking in Surrey. That's near me. It is. Every March, the winner of the race receives £100 and a barrel of ale. <laughs> Whilst the carrier of the heaviest wife is always given a pound of sausage. <laughs> the loser traditionally receives a prize of dog food and one pot noodle. <laughs> Amazing. A pot noodle, fucking hell. That's in March, is it, eh? Yeah. I'm pretty busy in March, but you never know. Might be able to slip, by, slip in there and go watch it. <laughs> Uh, the World Gurning Championships. Oh, Gurning's amazing. Gurning, man. What do you think it's... other people would think about the wife carrying one then? Other countries? Uh, it seems very Neanderthal, doesn't it? It does. I think they they go, yeah, you guys eat, fight each other for watching football. Like... One thing that's not on this list um, is like Scottish um, t- caber tossing. That's like a really weird event, isn't it? Like loads of big buff Scottish guys pick up these giant logs. I think that's quite cool. I'd like to have a go at that. Them. Yeah, but those logs weigh so much. They're like Incredible Hulk to throw that. I'd like, I'd like to have a go. I don't know. Yeah, I'd, I hope. I'd, I don't know. I'll get a smaller one or something which is more for my size, but I'd like to have a go at it. I've always thought that. You'd fancy. I'd, I'd like I'd to toss. You, I'd like to toss your cable. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. The World Gurning Championships is a British, uh, a traditional British expression for pulling a funny face. That's what Amazing. gurning means. Through the through the little toilet seat. or toilet seat. That's it. Yeah. Um, the, the championship is a worldwide contest to see who can pull the most ridiculous faces. They take place every year in Cumbria. As part of part of the town's crab fair, which dates back to twelve sixty seven. That may that means in twenty twenty the seven hundred and fifty third edition of the fair happened. There are a lot of these happening. Um, basically, the World Gurning Championships is who can make the funniest face. A lot of these guys don't have any teeth, so if you if you look up yeah, Gurning Championships, look at them. guys. Look at them. They look fucking weird, these guys. They can suck their mouths inside their mouths. They can sort of... It's just weird, Gav, isn't it? These yeah. pictures... I, just, I it, remember it, seeing all these uh, when I was a kid, these pictures of books. Yeah, book. yeah. It's, it's, I've seen them for many years, actually. Um, that is quite English. I think any other countries could be like, yeah. And they always wear a toilet seat or a tire around their neck when Especially they do if it. if it depicts us English as bad t- teethed. Oofed. I thought you were going to say bad tits then. <laughs> the British have got bad tits. Good tits in America, though. Yeah, it's a weird one. Look at the pictures, people. The final one on. is the, the Tar Barrel Festival. This is terrible. The Tar Barrel Festival is a, a unique New Year celebration held in Northumberland, which dates back about 160 years. A procession of men parade through the street carrying a barrel on their back or on their shoulders filled with tar sawdust and paraffin why the men dress in guising costumes for the parade which brings in crowds of locals and tourists the guises are always men except for in the 50s when women were allowed to the parade the parade ends in the main square just before midnight where the barrels are all thrown onto a bonfire illuminating the entire village no one knows where the origins of the festival come from. They can either be pagan or Christian. 
So you carry a barrel mm. full of flammable material and liquid on your back okay. through the village. I think it used to be lit. Um, but these days, you just carry it on it, and then you heft it onto a giant bonfire. Weird. I don't think that that's that weird. I guess have you not. Ever, have you ever I watched d- The World's Strongest Man? That's a pretty weird show. I suppose, yeah. I think running after a big lump of cheese is a bit weird. Is that your favourite one? That's, that's, my, that's, my, that's the one where my ankles are definitely snapping. Listen, if I listen. After we've finished tonight... I'm not going to go roll cheese. Go on YouTube. No, go, go on YouTube. Uh, oh, you're asking me a look. Go on YouTube. Have a little look at it. You'll see people like rag dolls falling down. It is painful to watch. Well, you you have to let your body go. You have the to hill, let your body go limp. If, the hill is like, uh, it's like a cliff. It's vertical. It's ridiculous. Okay? All right. That's what I'm going to say. All right. I'll okay. check it out. Yep. All right. Well, Bill. Uh, I thought they were going to be cliches, though. By the way, for, sorry, Bill. Hang on, one second, Bill. I thought they would be like very English cliches. You're going to say to me, you know. What else would you like? No, nothing. That's, that's what I thought it was going to be. So yes. <laughs> what else would you like? Listen to me. What else would you like? <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh. Bill. Bill, it's time to go. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though. Give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. And we're back. Thank you Ooh. very much. For coming along Happy with birthday. Us. Happy birthday to you again. Thank you, sir. 22 today. 31. Huh? 20, oh, no, it's 2022. 19. Yes, it is. I'm 19 today. 1922. <laughs> You're 100 years behind, my friend. That is the end of the show, ladies and gents. That was episode 117. That was a Gav birthday special where we looked at those two movies related to the carry-on genre or the British sexy, saucy comedy genre. I had a lot of fun with those two. Um, we said off there that, um, you know, those those films, they're not really huge standout films, but there is they are enjoyable. We were worried our conversation wouldn't be very good, but we both had a really good time chatting about those films. So um, Yeah, sometimes you know. it's... it's um... We could probably get a film which is crap, and we could probably talk about it and make it uh, more entertaining. Good time, sir. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, um, so that's that's your B day, B day, B day. What you what you doing? Did you you know you didn't do much for your birthday? Did you have any? <laughs> what was your best present? Tell me about your best present. Uh, the kids got me the shining board game. Oh, that sounds shit. Uh, anything else? I got a few bits and bobs. I uh, got a, a cushion from Sarah. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm sure the board, board game is brilliant. Oh no, yeah, I can't wait to play it. It's, it looks a little bit uh, uh, complicated. It won't be too bad, uh, but I need to get it, playing it. Really, it's trying to find time to do it. You have to have it free members as well, not free penises, free people. Oh, I was going to say. Oh, oh. I was going to say um, this is the first year I think I've not gotten you a birthday present. Uh, normally, get you something silly or a T-shirt. Normally, the last couple of years, but I do have. Firstly, that Sid James frame picture, which isn't a present. That's just you looking after it for me. But I do have something else. I keep meaning to send you. I just haven't got around to it. So. You'll get that in the post. I just need to find a way to send it to you without getting arrested. I mean, without what? Uh. No, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. You'll, you'll get it from me. Don't you worry. Um, good episode. Good fun times. Uh, well, it's February. Our next episode is going to be dropping. You know what? Um, and you know what? Also, what? Sarah got me the cushion for Christmas. Sarah got me a, a, a book. Which book? Last book on the left. Do you know the uh, last podcast on the left? I do. Oh, yeah. Is it related to that? Uh, they made a book, so they went into detail of the main serial killers, and they've just done a whole oh, thing, which sweet. is not so much stuff on the in, in the show. They sort of did extra stuff, um, and it's that. And uh, yeah, she got me some slimer socks as well. But and my mum and my mum got me a uh, a tour for two of us. So Sarah would do it with me a trip uh, the Jack the Ripper tour. Oh yes. Around London, so we're gonna do that, and we're gonna tie in. We're gonna stay in London and tie in. A, we're doing a, a film episode. Um, well, we, we walk around and do like a little documentary thing around all the spots and film that, and also we're gonna record an episode on Jack the Ripper for the uh, the High Strangers podcast. Amazing. Yes. Oh yeah, that sounds cool. Death. I got I got a book for Christmas. I got Will Smith's biography. 
it's just called Will. Um, oh, okay. It's brilliant. I'm halfway through it. It's so inspirational. Willography. I fucking, I fucking love Will Smith. You do, you do. I do. I don't know why I do. I love him. He's brilliant. He's awesome. He's amazing. So you know. Uh, but yes, he's he's very good. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, I now think about it. My mum got me that voucher of Christmas for birthday. She got me another voucher of gangster spots around London. But your mum is a all good the, egg. All the all the cray murder spots and the lockstock smoking barrel uh, film spots and Val Blackwood t- takes you around the spots. He's the guy in it with the afro. Yeah. If someone spills milk, I'm not the kind of pussy to go licking it up. Yeah, he takes you around the spots. Oh my god, he's brilliant. I know. I can't wait. He's a he's a white crack. I bet. I love him in that. I also love the my favourite line in that whole film is, "All right, you got something for me." Yeah, just Billy Jones just saying that. That's enough. Yeah, that's good. But anyway, anyway that, uh, that's yeah. that. So I'm gonna do some London London tings. That sounds good to me. Um, well, February is our next episode drop dropping. Uh, that's episode 118. And as usual in February, we get we usually get a bit romantic because it's February. We it's Valentine's. We get deep. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> fuck it. Well, I mean, we do. We get but... deep down, sexy, funkin' but... sexy. But enough about me and you. Let's talk about the podcast. The next episode. So we've toyed with what we're going to do. We we talked about, um, you know, do, how sexy do we get? You know, do we cover just some porn films? What what do we do? Um, I even thought about True Romance because you know, it's called True Romance. If you want some soft core porn uh, horror, Storm Swept on Amazon Prime. Check, you check messaged me the other day. I could not believe this movie. Sarah and I watched it, and I was a bit like, "It's really pornographic." <laughs> it's. I thought it was just going to be a hot. It's, it's people stuck in a mansion, and there's a thunderstorm. It's a film crew, and there's a killer. So you know, it's it's gav movie. But I didn't. I thought oh, I was going to have some boobs, maybe some pubic hair, you know. And well, fucking hell, it's, it's a bit pornographic. It's Amazing. not hardcore, but you know, it's it's enough. Well, we're not covering that. What we are covering is... <laughs> we're not even covering that, so let's stop talking about it again. What we are covering is two two films. <clears throat> one I've picked, one you picked. Well, the one I've picked is a classic um, 1980s zombie comedy. We were going to pair it with something else, but we're going to do this. Um, the reason we're going to do this one is it's all about the prom, prom dates, but it involves zombies and, and romance. Dates and dates and it's called uh, as we all can probably guess night of the creeps we're going to be doing night of the creeps for our february episode 80s um, and we are going to be pairing this up with uh a film that i've never seen but that gav i'm, put, I'm is... putting my putting my like my name down as in like this is a pretty good flick, so we can hit in there with a good classic movie. It's a pretty good movie, and I'd really like some of you guys to check it out. If you haven't seen it yet, you probably should watch it before we do a review, or, or just listen to us to see if you fancy watching it, but obviously we spoil stuff. It's called uh, tw- it's from 2017, and it's called Double Date. Hmm. And the synopsis is, a man who can't speak to ladies, his friends make things happen for him. But there's two man-killing sisters looking for a virgin man to sacrifice to bring their daddy back from the dead. I don't know any more than that. It could be zombies. It could be vampires. It could be all of it. But the the, the it looks like it's well produced from what I'm seeing on IMDb. It's got a solid six point zero on IMDb, which doesn't give it much really. Six out of ten, but no, but it's all right. So we're covering Double Date. A Night of the Creeps for our February episode. That's episode 118. I really enjoyed it. I watched it once. Really, really liked it. Now, I haven't seen it again, so I'm hoping it's going to be okay. And I haven't just tried to sell it to everybody, especially you, Dan, as it being so great. So please go in open-minded, everybody. Well, I'm really looking forward to going into that open-minded and open everything else. I think you're going to come out and go, I really enjoyed that, I think. Oh. Well, good. Well, I, 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 I trust it's, you it's, in it's, your judgment. It's... British, it's comedy horror, and the comedy's pretty good. It's not in your face. It's it's quite it's susly done. Oh, it's British well. as well, is it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like I said, like, I'm, um, I've got a friend who went to university with the main actor. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I look forward to that. So that's in, our in next episode. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's that's sexy. It's really sexy. 
That is double date. It's and really sexy. Night of the creeps. Bill. Bill. What did Bill just do? Stop it. Oh, God. Hashtag me wait too. To, wait to the next episode, at least. Ha- hashtag Ghostbusters 2. I mean, me too. Uh, okay, so... Should we wrap up? Should we wrap this bad boy up? Yeah. With a big bow on top? Great. As always, then, we are a proud member. The podcast on Honda Hill is a proud member of Legion Podcasts. You can find out more about Legion Podcasts if you go to legionpodcast.com. Um, and also, you can go to uh, Facebook and just search for Legion Podcasts. And you can search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. That's where we're most active. You can join our Facebook page. You can chat to us. You can message us. We can share trailers and posters and what we're watching and all that business. You can listen to this podcast wherever you listen to us now, to be honest with you. You don't need me to tell you that. But we are on Spotify. We're on YouTube and a couple of other places. And on Spotify, you can leave us a review. Why don't you do that? If you like this, go do it. Uh, you can leave us do reviews it. in lots of places as well. But but yeah, go do it. Do, do it. it. It helps us as a podcast. Do, do it. it. Do 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 it. Uh, we are also in places like Twitter, at Haunted Podcast. Instagram, that's the podcast on Haunted Hill, Insta. And you can email us directly at the podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook.com. If you want to message us, if you want to send us Sexy sorted pictures. pictures. Oh. <laughs> oh. No one has. No one has Attach yet. Attach us a picture. Show us a bit of Don't, a leg. No one will. Yeah. I'll be happy, and I'll be happy with it. Yeah, let's do it. Send us pictures. Um, if you want to know more about things that Gav and I do outside of the podcast, we have a film production company called DeadboltFilms.com. Which, which in 2021, it was fucking nothing really happened, and it nothing was just happened. a bit like, oh my god. So we've we've already had a meeting this year already. So we're just, we're, we're doing things. But uh, we have a YouTube channel. Just go to Deadbolt Films. Um, you can also go to Instagram and just type in Deadbolt Films. And Twitter, it's at Deadbolt Films. And also, for those of uh, those of you guys who really want to support us, and those of you that already do, thank you. Uh, we are on Patreon. Um, so, Patreon, just jump on there. Um, type in the podcast on Haunted Hill. And for as, as little as, I believe, a dollar or a pound a month, you can support us. You don't have to, though. We will always do this. Always do this for free. But... It really, really helps if anybody does chip in a little bit because it means we can keep things ticking over. There's a reward of T-shirts as well and other p- up- get, upcoming goodies for you get people. get a T-shirt if you become a patron. And there's some exclusive content. And if you have become a patron and you have not received a T-shirt or have not got your T-shirt or have not got back to us about a T-shirt, please get back to us and we can get you one if you're listening to this now. I'm thinking, where's my T-shirt? We've well, got it waiting for you right here. Mm. Um and you will also get some exclusive content. Um, we are currently going through our back catalogue. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! I'm good. Uh, now. <laughs> every, fr- every Friday, we are dropping one of our very old episodes. We're currently on episode 15, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, until we've caught back up, and obviously this is episode 117, so it's going to be a long time. But it's fun. It's fun for people to listen to if they want to. Um, I always post what the, what the films were. You know, so for example, if it's like the Leprechaun and you don't want to watch it, you don't yeah. listen to it. That's fine. But if it's like a, a film like I've just dropped the Hammer Horror one, some people might really want to listen to that. Uh, so that's cool. So either way, you get those. Occasionally, Gav will drop some video nonsense, won't you, Gav? Not anything X-rated. Don't worry. Um, well, I don't know. Are you? No plans on it. <laughs> no plans yet. Um, but sometimes Gav will drop some X-rated stuff on. There. I mean, some video stuff. On there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Uh, and a few other bits and bobs come up on there as well um, so yeah you can also join the uh, Legion Patreon as well if you wanted to just the same thing just go to the Legion Podcast on Patreon um, well that leads us nicely to thank our, our patron supporters Gavin I uh, no thank you so much um, for uh, helping us and supporting us really really appreciate it um, I love just doing these shows I really do so it's nice to know that you guys um, like them as well, and 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 supporting us in a in a financial way is amazing. It just really does show us that you appreciate them. And I'm going to read you all out now in the, my most British accents that I can do. So here we go. Thank you ever so much to RJ McCready, Lambiel. That first one sounded Australian. <laughs> Rachel Elizabeth, Sarah Key. 
That was Scottish. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Kevin S. Fife. Jamie Salmon. Jill Smith. That's it. Matthew Goodley. <laughs> Josh Myers. Ooh, and Don Cole. Yeah. Ooh. 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 You get the special one, Don. Because you're, you're the newest patron sports. Do you get that? Ooh. Ooh. And Don, also, Don, hit me up about that t shirt size, mate. Because uh, I can get that shipped out to you. Hit me up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. So much, so much. Thank you, guys. Listen. Um, I also do have a blast. Pimp, very much pimp out it, pimp it out. I do have another podcast called the High Strangers Podcast. Talk about weird Ooh. things. Um, so do come check out. Next time we're checking out Fritzel. Oh. I can't wait for that one. Oh, I can't. I, I'd be interested. I can't wait to talk about the psychology of the person. But fucking hell. <clears throat> anyway, I look, for, I look forward to the day they make a film with that. I don't. I don't want to Kev, watch it. Kev, Kevin Spacey is Joseph Fritz. Oh, I watched American Pie the other day. No, American Beauty the other day. Such a good film. It's but... a really good film, but it, even in that, it, when he's just like trying to take the girl's pants off, who's basically Dude. his friend's daughter's friend, so she must Dude. be like 17. It, 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 that film blew me away. That was a, a time in cinema where I was really appreciating cinema. 1999. Matrix, he's, Blair Witch, I'm, I'm sort of American that sort Beauty. Of age. Yeah, it's a very, very, very good film. Um, I was a sort of, I am a sort of age now that he's sort of portraying in the film, and he's gonna get on for seventeen year olds. Be like, oh. but also like the whole like um, thing with the, the neighbor's dad thinking he's trying to like get it on yeah, with the boy. He looks, through, he looks through the window, so he thinks his son's going down on him and stuff. Uh, and of course, in real life, you know, he did Selling get him some weed. He did sort of get caught up in a whole I'm molesting younger boys thing. It's just, it's yeah. hard to separate the art from the act. Artist. A- anyway, let's not get onto that now. Come on, see how the show. Um... Sorry, it's your birthday episode. I can't believe, <laughs> yeah. can't believe we finished up with Kevin Spacey yeah. going down don't, on you. Don't your birthday. finish off with Kevin Spacey. Don't finish him off. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> don't finish off Kevin Spacey. Bill Murray, that's your job, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. He said. He said. There's ectoplasm everywhere. <laughs> anyway, I've got another podcast to do. Right, guys. I'm glad you've come along and enjoyed the show. Dan is talking come absolute nonsense. Along. Don't feed Dan after midnight because this feed. is what happens. Oh, <laughs> turns into <a> Frankenstein <laughs> Howard. Frankie Howard. <laughs> Frankenstein. Howard. Yeah. Well, listen. It's a good night from Frankie Howard. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. It's, Say some good nights. It's a good night from me. I'm tired. Uh, and it's a good night from. Um, I don't know. Sid James. <laughs> there we go. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. God bless. Take care. And watch under your bed because you never know. Oh, Ooh, it's Frankie Howard. <laughs> <laughs> See you people. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.